theory and more. What's the situation? And Ryan, what's up, guys? How you doing? And Welcome me. back to another Hello. Star Rift. We're here with the boys. Hmm. How you doing? We're doing awesome. I've lost my mind, apparently. <laughs> oh um, my god. I, I don't know. Yeah. I can't I mean, believe what's mind. going on right now in Star Wars. I just, I can't take it anymore, guys. I've lost my mind. Or we needed a good title for the stream. One or the yeah. other. You'll have well, to watch the entire thing. To yeah, hopefully out. you'll lose your mind today so it's not full clickbait. But, hey. Um, we got the Bad Batch coming tomorrow. Which I know Mahler is super excited for. Literally, just oh, I'm I'm shaken. I am I'm shooketh. Do you even know like what the bad batch is like in principle? I already told you. I guessed like oh, it's just gonna be like a botched set of clones that didn't come out right, and then they go off on adventures and they're all dying one by one or something because nobody cares. Well, they're mutants. Uh, <laughs> mutants. Do they have powers? Yeah. <laughs> They, they're deviated from normal clones, right? Like one's really retarded, but he's way stronger, right? You know, uh -huh. one's got enhanced senses. One's uh, one's a really good fucking <laughs> sniper. One's really good with tech. You know what they call him? Tech. Um, Whoa. Like I know. All right, cool. Well, I'm excited. And there's another one. There's a female clone called Omega. She's going to be your favorite mauler. Well, I'm gonna want to watch. Theory's uh, just gone. Theory lost his mind. Right. Just when, whenever someone mind. mentions female at this point, I can't. You know, I've learned to just not even be in the same freaking screen. So I said she's gonna be Mahler's favorite. Yeah, yeah. That's a good I, clip. I assume yeah. you really like New Zealand accents. Me? Oh, oh, me? Mahler. Oh, Why me? Mahler? Why? I don't know. It's close to whatever you fucking speak. You know where New Zealand is, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, was it Australia was some like, kind of like penal colony or some shit? I'm sure New Zealand's <laughs> the same type of thing. Yeah, right next door, uh, pretty much to good old Britain. You know, we hang out. It, that's hold like on, wor that's the, worse than the, the UK, Irish thing. Yeah, the UK like spread their seed all over the world with imperialism, right? It's badass. It was awesome. But I mean, <laughs> let's not pretend like that's not like like just because. Like, it's You're like why, I, away from you. why would I like the more than theory? I'm sure theory loves New Zealand. I like New Zealand, yeah. With, yeah, see, he goes easy on everything, okay? He doesn't want to hate stuff like we do, Mahler, but you mm. specifically love New Zealand. Hey, we're chipping them away, them, okay? That heart is not gonna last. Getting no. pieces every day, but they're working every the, day, yeah. The volcano, yeah. see what happens. Also, and I'm excited maybe become also for a home. damsel. You, you heard about that? That, that, uh, that cool new movie coming on out on Netflix. It's gonna be is that um an AI generated thing. What? No, it's real. It's that's the saddest part is that it's real. It's a film about how there's a girl who has to marry a prince, and instead she is gonna be fed to like a dragon, but she's gonna fight the dragon and she's gonna defeat the kingdom and she's gonna be the queen. That looks like the story. Or be friends the dragon. I'm not sure, but the tagline is "This is no fairy tale." Dot dot dot. And the. Uh, it just look. It looks so good. Um, the I didn't believe it was real. No, I thought it was fake when I first saw it. I was like, "That's pretty funny." But you know, what are you gonna do? Um, what else has Netflix got coming out? The Atla live action. What about that? You guys excited? I don't know what that is. I've, I've not seen. <laughs> uh, the is that the last Airbender thing? Yes. I am. I. I gonna... I'm not like a fan or anything of the cartoon, so I'm going into that with like no idea, no no bias or towards like what that's supposed to be the first trailer looked kind of cool but i don't really know shit about it i think the latest like tv spot or whatever pissed people off we'll have to see i think it's gonna make uh, everyone get mad one way or another so ryan will lose his mind i think ryan might lose his mind yeah nice i don't think so i'm not invested in that so did it'd you be watch tough. the bad batch me yeah i've watched uh pretty much all of it I watched all of season one. I skipped around a little season two, and someone maybe watched the season two finale. Did okay. you skip the tech episodes? Well, season two finale's got a little bit of tech in it. Hmm. See, I'm going to be going in unbiased, like like unlike you two. I'm going to go in and be able to assess it properly because I'm I haven't got the bias of watching the first two seasons. 
which is how you're supposed to watch TV, by the way. Oh, wait, so you're going to go in the third season and watch it? And, well, <laughs> I assume you know, I have to, so, so that I know the now. fuck you guys are talking about. When I, yeah, well, exactly. And you're like, oh, Jumbo and Tech, they went on that amazing adventure where they killed all the Gungans. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to see that shit. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, fuck, Jumbo, you might still be on that planet, right, chat? What would you guys call him? Fat Mace Windu? <laughs> I would love to see Wrecker just commit genocide against the Gungans. I think that'd be an interesting storyline. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> and Wrecker, Wrecker's the one who's like strong but kind of retarded Mauler. So oh, I thought that was Tech. No, no, Tech is good with Tech, obviously. Tech's brilliant. I thought he was like the smart one. Oh, it's, wait, yeah, no, that makes it's sense. It's essentially the Ninja Turtles, man. So he's kind uh, of smart and strong, yeah. yeah. Tech is Donatello. Wrecker is Raphael. Michelangelo. Because <laughs> he's, he's stupid. He's like, you know, he's. Do they um, crosshairs Raphael? Because he's like brutal. Crosshairs Raphael, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And then Hunter's Leonardo. Who's Splinter? Right. Omega. Fuck. Who's Shredder? Omega. He's both? What's a she, son of a bitch? Um, That's your opinion. Well. She's she's a she's a clone who who's female, and uh, yeah. spoiler alert: she's the key to everything. Who would have thought? Um, the one clone that's female. Hopefully, we got a live action for uh, that character. Then I really hope that <laughs> I hope season two of Book of Boba Fett has him finding Omega and like adopting her as a daughter. Except she's actually better at everything than he is. That's what I. That's what I hope we get. Do you really think um, we'll get a second season of Book of Boba Fett? Is that even possible? I think so. Yeah, or they have to. They have to make it right, dude. They can't Wait, is make it right? It, it, <laughs> they is can't. O- is Omega? It's been a while since I watch it. Is she also uh, age at twice the speed? Is she like rapid aging, or is she no. No. no? no, so they all. I think they all slowed down. Yeah, because I don't remember that or not. So in theory. Um, like her and Boba Fett could be relatively uh, close to the same age. Yep. My sister, Echo. Yeah. Not Echo, Omega. O- Omega. Yeah. Yep. So what threads uh, at the end of season two of Bad Batch are you guys excited to see concluded? Season three. Huh? Season three, you got what? it right. It's season three. No, what he's saying is what threads at the end of the last season are you looking forward to seeing closed up in this season? Oh, I'd love to see if Tech is actually alive, because I think he is. I think they're preserving his body. <clears throat> yeah, why would they actually kill anyone for real in this fucking series? Oh, That'd yeah, be crazy. Exactly. Uh, I think, no, I think Crosshair's going to die. Oh, no. Sure. I think um, <laughs> the, one of the things that's pissed me off more than any other stuff is the fact that they brought in Mount Tantis and everything into this just pisses me off. What? Um, why? Be, because they're they're not doing it. Why? Why would you bring in stuff? Because they're gonna fuck from the up. shit you threw away. That you're not even doing it right. You're not even doing it the same fucking Dude, way. Ryan's losing his mind. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> He's gonna lose. I'm, I'm pushing him, man. I'm gonna make him lose his mind. Uh okay. So how would you do it? Well, how would I? One, I, I wouldn't bring in anything from fucking legends once you threw it all away. Create, make, make your own shit. Don't try to bastardize stuff and make people like literally just because a couple of people heard, like, he said Mount Tantus. Oh my God. And it's a complete bastardization <laughs> of everything. It's literally me. I know that's you. Like, I, I don't understand that. <laughs> that's me, dude. Why would you want that, though? Because they don't have anything else. What if they brought in a random, some random redheaded chick? Right, who's a little bit sassy in season four of The Mandalorian, and she was like, "My name's Mara Jade." Would you be lose fucking, your mind? Yeah, it'd be fucking dope. Well, why? Because in this universe where Luke Skywalker's not going to get married to her, while well, Luke Skywalker's already a fucking failure piece of shit and everything that we've <laughs> seen happen, why would you be excited for them to bring in a character who was actually good in one iteration of canon just for a little fucking pop? Uh, like a recognition before they destroy this person's character further. That's the stuff that doesn't make any sense to me. Brian, let's say you're in the desert. You got no food, no water. Are I would die. I would rather die. No. <laughs> Papa comes thing. along and says, hey, Ryan, zip. Let me give you a little bit of liquid. You're going to be like, you're going to tell me that you're just not, you're going to be like, no. Oh. 
Why did you just compare watching Disney Star Wars to being peed on? <laughs> That's we're all being... the light. No, you're not. How did you? How do you not get that? You're being would... starved. I would rather die with a little bit of dignity than let John Favreau and Dave Filoni piss down my fucking throat to keep me alive. <laughs> I think That's John. I, I think have. John knows exactly what he's doing. I just think that fucking Kathleen or someone came in there and just destroyed everything because I. It was three was just so fucked from what one and two were. So I, I really I have a hard time believing that freaking John Favreau wrote that piece of shit that was the season three. You, let me just. Uh... <laughs> pretend we're a week ago okay. and we were talking about lizzo and you were like <laughs> man whoever can't believe they did that okay like, okay one stupid cameo decision because he thinks it's going to pull in views and ratings from freaking lizzo fans that's totally separate from him writing the entire story of season three i mean that like that one episode yeah it's shit he made a dumb decision there are probably people talking in his ear being like we need to get the ratings for this show we need to get influencers and so they get fucking lizzo and then he's like oh yeah what are you writing me writing are you typing something <laughs> yeah no? I'm, I'm editing a video oh <laughs> the fuck wait editing would type you write out titles or something I, it yeah. looks like he was <laughs> typing L literally i'm fucking typing in right here I i'm editing a video i've exported it now i'm about to upload it to youtube i gotta oh, work too i can't just do the stream oh, wow. see, I was... right. i'm listening to damn. you Fuck. you want me to repeat what you just said no man no whatever what okay there's a difference between what good. happened getting a tiktok an influencer get lizzo fans blah, yeah blah, yeah blah. yeah you get here's my point. here's my thing I know. but here's my point. thing i don't think that i don't think that Mandalorian season three is that drastic of a drop off from two when you just look at the quality of the writing and the story that they actually told and when you get all of the cameo stuff out of your head. How oh, it was. I, I, I think it me, was quite different. I, on, the, on the rewatch, and I've heard this from a lot of people, on the rewatch of Mando season two, yeah. um, when you don't have the jangling keys of, oh my gosh, Boba Fett, oh my gosh, when you, when you know where it goes, oh my gosh, Ahsoka, oh my gosh, Luke Skywalker, when you don't have that and you just are left with the shell of season two, I, I don't think it's that impressive. Uh, and I don't, I think Mando season three is a step down, but I don't think it's a big a step down as most people make it out to be. The difference is your jangling keys are Jack Black and Lizzo instead of all those characters I just said. No, I, I disagree because most of season three was a focus on Bo-Katan and the discombobulated story that just went back and forth nowhere, focusing on Bo's crew and then the armorer and then a tiny little bit of, not even Mando and, and Grogu. And then in the end, it's like literally you get like, this is like the bullshit they're doing lately is they build up a whole bunch of crap for six episodes or whatever it is. And then the last two episodes kind of culminate what you wanted to see after I'd say episode three. So they give you, give you like five, six episodes of bullshit that you don't need. And then like, oh, well, here's your season. What the fuck? To, to me, time. the best episode of uh, season two by far was the Bill Burr uh, episode. Yeah. Right. When they go into the Imperial facilities, forced to yeah. take off his helmet. Like there's actually some shit there where you're like, okay, this is how far he's willing to go. Right, right, and I think there was some good stuff yeah. in there, and I think there was some great stuff between Bill Burr humanizing, you know, the Imperials. Sure. Unfortunately, you kind of throw all of that humanization out the window, where he's like, "Let me do it," and he just blows them to fucking pieces, <laughs> like forty-five seconds after he's humanized them. Um, but yeah. still, I think that's probably the best episode of that season because you're not way to me, you're not weighed down. Yeah, okay, we remember this guy from season one, yeah. but it's actually about a story instead of. And there was a lot of dumb stuff in that episode, don't get me wrong, with the fight that they had on the tank, the fact that they're transporting those things with things on wheels to begin with, very strange. But that to me was like the best overall episode. Um, a lot of the other episodes, I think, especially in a rewatch, especially when you realize that Grogu was gone for two seconds of this person's life, it all means yeah. nothing. No, it's bullshit. I know. I agree. And that's why I think that Disney really did come in and tell Favreau, yo... We need to do something to get Grogu back because we got to sell shit and we got to get ratings up and we're worried we're not going to get ratings. That's my theory. So, And he was probably like, well, okay, let's uh, do the Boba show and just reintroduce Grogu somehow. 
So let's just Uber him to Tatooine. With the, I think that's um, the whole reason. Explanations of like the studio being the reason that it's bad. What stops that from being what's going to happen, you know, in future? Uh, because I hope that they'll see the outcry from fans and they'll be like, okay, maybe we need to not do this shit. Or you could just as easily be doubled down on, right? They'll be like, oh, we need to control could even be. more. Remember could what uh, Bob Iger said about uh, the Marvels? He was like, oh, we need some more supervision. Got to get in there more. That's what will make that better. Oh, see, I took that as like, we need to start. Well, remember when he said we need to start telling stories and not focusing on politics, which is pretty fucking hilarious considering he's yeah, literally but you know, in charge of all that bullshit. Had all those same films have made, you know, 1.5 billion each, he'd have been in that organization being like, yeah, we told great stories. It's like, it's just numbers. He has no idea what the difference between a good story and a bad story even is. Uh, all that stuff he said is just damage control. Like, he would have told us. TFA, amazing. TLJ, yeah, pretty good. And then Rise of Skywalker is okay. But, you know, it seems, seems to be some form of a decline. Solo wasn't good, though. Like, it's strictly based on money. It has nothing to do with, like, the stories themselves. That's, yeah, that's why I call these guys the suits. They're just a bunch of pencil pushers that sit up there and uh, fucking talk bullshit and look at statistics and numbers and what they think will do right, but they have no actual clue what does right, which is just the story, which is why George was so successful when it was an independent company. And now it's just perverted and destroyed and milked and they're just looking at freaking graphs and bullshit. So I agree with you. I, I don't disagree at all. I just think that there has to be some point where the graphs start to decline and they're like, well, maybe we should shift our whole perspective of this. And maybe we should start hiring some competent people that actually understand Star Wars instead of just big name directors or writers. Uh, you know, point being... Why the fuck did Joby Harold write the Kenobi show? Why did Deborah Chow direct it the way she did and cut out so much important stuff to do with the characters and lead them the way they that she did? Well, why did De we have Deborah Chow got the job because people praised her on Mandalorian season one? That's why she got that job. Oh, whatever. She directed like a couple episodes, and that was with the supervision of John Favreau. I, I'm know? just telling you that's why she was. Oh, I know. That's why she I, got that job. Yeah, know? no, I agree with you, but it, it's. You, you can't, like, it, they're just, like, handing keys out to random people. It's like, well, this is, you need to let Dave decide and discern who hands out, who does what project, and he has to oversee everything, which I'm glad that he's now, you know, I feel like slowly it just takes fucking years. You're smirking. And I, I hate Dave. I'm, I'm just letting you finish. <laughs> well, I got some as well. His responsibilities are literally the same as they were a couple years ago. He's been doing it for a long time. He consulted yeah. on the Obi Wan Kenobi series, like, and not to I mention, just think the more we press, the more they're going to freaking see that hey, we got to change some stuff around because this is just not good. The hiring of Deborah Chow for uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, I'm pretty sure when that was known, people saw it as a good thing because she mm -hmm. was responsible for season one, episode three, and season one, episode seven of uh, Mandalorian season one. Now. I take the the super spicy position that Mandalorian season one is shit as well. Uh, we don't have to Oof. deal with that right now. But so I was like, well, Kenobi's fucked. And I just I'm amused, I guess, by the idea of like, how did she get that job? It's like, well, surely you would be like, hey, it would be cool to have a director of strong episodes from the other series get maybe a few more episodes or even a full season. There's only six episodes, right? Mm. Yes. Uh, of what? Kenobi. Being Kenobi. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So uh, I guess what I'm getting at is just the this this incestuous sort of series of people that are dealing with Star Wars right now is just like yeah I, I mean what about if we all the three of us gave a percentage chance of the next uh, thing from them what do you think it is for being good uh, let's let's remove Andor from the equation What's the the acolyte is next the acolyte's next well bad okay, bad so, is technically well, next yeah let's go action. with I don't know because we all know that. <laughs> Like I'm trying to find something fair. Help me out here. Like, what's what's a fair neutral? We we have Acolyte Mandalorian and Grogu. Room. Let's call it. Let's say Mandalorian and Grogu. Percentage chance on how, how it, it it being good. Uh, Ryan, theory. Do you want to go? I what think. Guess me. I think Mandalorian movie will be good. But like, you, would you see, would you be rolling like uh, a seventy five percent chance? Seventy five. All right, Ryan. I would say a fifteen. Well, ten. 10 to 15 percent chance of being good i was gonna go with five I, yeah i was gonna say I, i'm probably more <laughs> generous than you i think really? there'll be i think it's a guarantee there'll be at least one scene that i'll be like that was pretty good yeah i like that that was good so, my you know. my issue with 
that and really with Mando season four is like, man, what what story are we gonna tell? Um, now, if it's if you're talking to Mandalorian season four, I can see a way where you're trying to continue to build up to the conflict with Thrawn. With a movie called Mandalorian and Grogu, I don't really know what you're going to be doing in that. Because to me, it's it's easier and more tolerable for us as the audience to sit through a season four of something that you realize is like building up to something rather than go to a theater and watch a standalone movie that's entire purpose is to build up to something that you're not going to see for another, you know, several years, if that's its sole purpose. And the title Mandalorian Grogu, I feel like it has to be some something between Mandalorian and Grogu and their relationship developing, but I don't, I don't know where it goes from here. It feels like sitting there with your feet up on your nice little place that you got. feels like he's ready to retire. I don't know. Yeah, we're yeah, going to think- do a time jump. We're going to make Grogu be able to speak to Mando directly. Probably not. You can't. You're stuck in this Thrawn I mean, time frame. I mean, but they could they could do anything. And that's kind of the interesting part about it is they could go into the sequels, which I hope they don't, or they can create their own timeline within uh, six and seven, which I think is what they're going to do, uh, you know, with everything going on with Ahsoka and all that stuff. So it's like, let's just focus on luke and some overarching threat in the galaxy which do we know if ahsoka season two is coming out before mando movie or not it it probably is Uh, they uh, there's no real timeline they haven't given us Mm. timeline on mando season four whatever happens with that ahsoka season two or mandalorian and grogu but like talking about mandalorian and grogu you think that's going to be about luke mandalorian and grogu and luke too no, I don't think it'd be about Luke, but I think, I think what they're doing is they're creating the Avengers. That's yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Right. So you know, Thrawn is he's the other blue guy. He's well, purple guy, whatever. He's he's a uh, Thanos. But what I want to see is someone who is perhaps even more powerful or villainous than Thanos, than than Thrawn, because so far Thrawn kind of looks like an or, idiot. or like competent. <laughs> but like what? Yeah. If if our concern is, oh, we need to get someone who's better than Thrawn. It's like, who wrote for Thrawn again? Well, All right, Filoni. Right. So who's right. writing for this new villain, Filoni? Well, no, so I don't think Filoni's the best at writing Thrawn, but he's good at writing Force users. So what we need, just like in Heir to the Empire, we had the intellect, which was Thrawn, which is hopefully they'll turn him intellectual. Uh, and then we had a mage, you know, like a wizard, a, a sorcerer of some sorts. I think that's the dynamic we need. You know, someone with the brains... And then someone with the well magical powers. Speaking of Filoni writing for Force users, how are you feeling about the you know Sabine or yeah. Hella, Hera? Sorry, at the Hera. getting that. You know what I mean? These are these are Force users now, and I don't feel good about it. No, and that's his latest work in relation to Force users. Yeah, I don't. Feel I'm good not about it. particularly yeah. entranced with Ahsoka, and I just had what was that? Eight episodes, seven, six. I can't remember anymore. Do you and, think uh, it was eight? I should be by now, especially because I like a Rosario Dawson a lot too. Like I, I don't know why I don't, I don't care about Ahsoka after all of that. It's like I really should. Do you think yeah. for Ahsoka? Because I know for, like you talked about a lot of like you feel like Favreau's kind of been interfered with when it comes to Mando. How do you feel about Ahsoka? Because to me, Ahsoka felt like exactly what Dave Filoni's literally always wanted to do. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, you know, Dave is really good when it comes to animation and stuff, and I think he kind of needs to understand the separation between, like, what you can get away with with animation and what you can't with live action. And so I think, you know, as much as I freaking loved seeing Hayden again, that whole sequence was a little bit confusing because it's like, well, is this a dream? Is she actually in the world between worlds? First of all, I don't like the world between worlds. I never did. I think it's just totally just cheapens the entire story. Pulling people out of portals and changing time, and then he says it's not a uh, it's not a way to go back in time. Like, what are you talking about? You literally changed an event from transpiring. How is it not time travel? It is. It's also a place where you can not only time travel one event, you can time travel any event because you're hearing echoes of every freaking thing that happened in Star Wars. So it's like, how are you going to go ahead and create that and not expect it to get messy? So, you know, you can do that in, in, in animation, in live action. I think it's a little more difficult to kind of make that realistic, even though it's Star Wars. 
but hey, you know, it's cool to see the visions and stuff like that. So as a fan, I'm happy, but also when I try to make it a little bit more realistic within the world of Star Wars, I'm like, eh, how is he going to pull this off? So yeah, we'll see. we'll see. There's a seriousness that comes with live action that I feel like isn't necessarily, I feel like with a lot of animated stuff, um, specifically in Star Wars. I feel like we don't approach it with the same seriousness sometimes. Maybe it's yeah. because we feel like it's geared Absolutely. towards a different audience or whatever. So if, if you, when you well, do bring that approach, and I obviously am not a big fan of a lot of the animated stuff Loney's done either, but when you take that approach and bring it to live action, really? you've seen a lot of people be pretty critical of it. I didn't know you weren't a fan of the uh, animated stuff. Yeah, I kind of keep it pretty low key. Oh, sure. I don't really <laughs> want to talk about that very much, but yeah. I'm familiar with that strategy. <laughs> Like some people will be like, oh, how could you? Oh, that was the thing. You... I have to, every time I mention Mandalorian season one, people are surprised. I'm like, hopefully it's forgotten now. What about Tales? We've did talked like about Tales? that before, right? Did you did you like it though? So there are elements of it I like. All the Ahsoka stuff. I'm so tired of Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take her out of here. Um, yeah. the Dooku Qui Gon stuff was interesting to me. Yeah. There was I. There was some interesting timeline stuff they did with when exactly Dooku erased Kamino and yeah. how, of course, Yaddle's the one that found out, which they, they changed a lot of shit to make that happen. Yaddle died yeah. before, like well before that, Way um, before. in an actual battle, not uh, against Count Duke, Dooku because Bryce Dallas Howard as Yaddle figured out who it was. It's not how it fucking happened. Yeah. And, and um, she saved Anakin when she did that when she, with the bomb. Yeah, hundred percent. And they they erased all of that so they could show us that story. Um, so, uh, like, I the, the Dooku stuff is cool, but I can throw away all of the Ahsoka stuff. Don't want it. I'm so tired of her. Um, it was like all right, the Dooku stuff. I just don't like it when they change <laughs> when, when they like change when you make decisions to change when things happen that were established because. Well, we just thought this would make a good story to, to, to tell in this 20 minute time frame. So we're going to change this and throw it out the window. 10 minute time frame. I, yeah. I have a curiosity uh, for, for, for theory, right? You, um, you weren't so fond of Star Wars Rebels, at least not compared to Clone Wars, right? No. Correct. So, because uh, maybe Ryan knows the answers to these questions a little bit more, but it seems to me from everything that I've read that Rebels is more Filoni's work than Clone Wars is. I would say so. Yeah, is that not a bit worrying that we we see him as his strength is in animation and that Rebels is considered pretty crap by a lot of people? Um, no, because it's focused on entirely new characters that have no structure to build upon. So he just has free flow; he can go wherever he wants with it. In Whereas Rebels, with Anakin or Ahsoka or Vader or whatever, there's structure. There's there's bones that you kind of have to like build the muscles around. You can't just create your own freaking structure there so he can't create new characters he can create new characters but i feel like when he is playing with you know ahsoka or anakin or vader or uh characters that have already been pre-established with george it's he's more confined which i think ends up with better characters but not so much with thrown no i mean you raise a good point you know but i don't think he understands Thrawn as well as he does perhaps Anakin or Ahsoka or um, Vader or Maul. Which I find pretty curious as well because you just said that um, even episode 5 was a bit confusing on the part of what is Anakin supposed to be and comments from Filoni haven't made it clearer nor is his comments on the will between worlds made anything clearer. Yeah, well, maybe it's supposed to be some sort of a speculation until it's dived into deeper in Ahsoka season two where we actually get some answers on the world between worlds because he's been quite vague ever since he created it he hasn't really explained properly yeah like intentionally vague so I'm guessing like okay there must be some sort of a story here perhaps it has something to do with the Mortis people I don't know I think he's fucking just making it up as he goes or he just doesn't know you think or JJ Abrams mystery box bullshit doesn't actually want to explain anything um, oh I hate that dude it's literally it what it yourself. is. Yeah. Yeah. And I I get, and I think you can do storytelling like that. I don't think that every single thing needs to be laid out. I think you can tell compelling stories when you do have some people, you know, discussing what did that mean? It was, was it really this? Was it really that? Um, yeah. However, I feel like there does come a time where you, 
do need to have some sort of definition onto what happened so that people can put in context of the rest of time. Are we going to have another World Between Worlds episode in Ahsoka season two? You know, are we going to go back there? Is anything going to happen in Ahsoka season two? Maybe. I still want to know. I still want to know, uh, you know, Anakin appearing as a force ghost to Ahsoka or Anakin, whatever he may have done, if he is the one, if he was the impetus behind Pointer of the World Between Worlds, whatever happened. Hey, why don't you drop a line to your son, you fucking dirtbag? Why don't you appear to him as a force ghost and tell him about Exegol? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, um, literally. I, and so, the, and the more you utilize that to try to make sure everyone understands how special Ahsoka is because of her connection with Anakin, the more hard it is to believe that Anakin never was able to reach out at all to his son um, and yeah, tell they, him any of these things he should have. So I, I really think you got to be careful when you use Anakin. They totally backed him into a corner there because it's like, well, now what do you got? You know, especially with that dumb ass comic where they freaking have Vader go to. I mean, who wrote off? Like, I seriously want to sit down with whoever freaking did that comic issue and be like, what were you thinking when you approved this shit? Vader goes to Exegol and Palpatine tells him about his entire plans and he sees the entire fleet and each ship is a star is a freaking Death Star. And he just Wait, never that, tells Luke. Was that comic before or after Rise of Skywalker? After, I think. After. Yeah, yeah Rise of Skywalker already made a cannon. Yeah, yeah, Rise of Skywalker is when they he had Kylo had to kill all those random people to get the triangle. Yeah, just because I think we mentioned this before. Kylo gets the Wayfinder from Mustafar, specifically Darth Vader's like yeah. HQ or whatever. So yeah. Vader knew about the waypoint that takes you to the uh, uh to Exegol. So he knew about yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I'm saying is the the comic is kind of just them, as Ryan just said, that all the books, I feel bad whenever I read about this stuff where they're just like, how do I explain this? And it's like they have to explain how Poe, like why he disappeared and then came back in TFA. Because well, it's not like JJ had any explanations for it. In I in think... the last Jedi novelization, they literally had to explain what was it? I think it was last Jedi novelization or Force Awakens. They had to explain how Ray got so powerful. Yeah. They had to like make up the force downloading oh. shit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. Literally like the Matrix. Yeah, when yeah. he got into her head, she like got all of his head in her. Oh my god. Which by the way is probably not canon anymore. I'm not even sure that like if you ask Daisy Ridley when she's sorting her new next film out, she probably have no idea what you're talking about. Dude, that was the I totally forgot about that, bro. Thank you for bringing that up. That is the most ridiculous shit. I've ever had to read. Well, yeah, because everyone was like, so just download into all the people you want to be really strong then. Yeah. Like, God, the Jedi were idiots for training people over several yeah. decades. You and, just and also it. now, anyone can use the Force with enough practice, so you can just, anyone can use the Force and you can immediately Force download all your knowledge into them and just have an army ready to go. Well, that was always they? a thing that George said, but it's like, yeah, dude, I mean, I, yeah, I don't think, I think there should be a freaking limit. Like, Sabine should not be able to do what she can do. There, there is. I need to dig up that quote too. Um, where George, yeah, I want to see it. You, you, yeah, yeah. What'd you say again? Something about potential or what? Yeah. So there's uh, obviously when he introduced midichlorians in the prequels, not just in like the ideas in his head or written down his notes, but actually in the thing that kind of yeah. changed a lot of people's perception of the force. Yeah. And there's a line in the it's in this book. I know you have this too. The yeah, the yeah. archives. The, I need to find prequel? exactly the page. Yeah. This is the prequel one. Yeah. Uh, I need to find exactly the page so I can find the quote itself. But there's let something, just, dude. Let me just freaking tweet the author right now, man. I, I've interviewed him. He'll answer. Well, yeah, it's George's quote. What, I made what a exactly, video about it. What exactly did it say? Let me pull it up actually, because I made a video about it. I took a screenshot. Maybe I can find the page number. But it's basically talking about how um, he specifically says if you have a certain amount of midichlorians. You can access your personal force. That's what he's talking about. Um, go to this channel. Uh, not this channel. RK Outpost Live. And Mahler can fill time while we're doing Sure, that. I can talk about how... I'm curious on these statements about, like, did George intend it or not? I'm curious. Is there anything George could have intended or wanted that you would have disagreed with, Theory? Sorry. I'll, sorry. Sorry. Um, Ryan, can you repeat that? It's where George says if one uses... Hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, you have it, so I shouldn't <laughs> message this guy? Yeah, you're good, you're good. Oh, okay, cool. I'm pulling up my video on where I have a screenshot. Apologies, Molly, uh, what'd you say? Uh, the Is there anything that George said 
about what's what is canon in Star Wars or what the intentions of Star Wars are that you felt yourself saying like, nah, that's not true. Yeah, there have been, I, I, but I don't remember exactly what they were. Well, I'll give you a famous one, right? Who shot first? Mm. Oh, who cares? <laughs> no, I care. I care about that. It's indicative of something, right? Like, um, to give us a movie and then to change a moment like that is to basically like tell us, you know, once we've had our our story has been delivered, that it's like, wait, 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 wait. I just wanted that didn't happen. It's like, well, no, it did. Oh, dude, like, uh, let me let me give you. So I had an interview. With, I believe it was with. Uh, I think that way the interview was with Paul Hirsch, and I can bring it up in a second here. So actually, I'll, I'll bring it up in a second. George, yeah, George full on like. I think the Museum of Film or something wanted the original cut of A New Hope, and George sent them the uh, <laughs> the remastered, like recut, like from nineteen ninety something. And they're like, "No, no, we want the original one. This is for the archives." He's like, "No, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm hanging on to that. I'm good. I'm 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 going to send you guys the one that's how it's supposed to be." So George is always updating his stories uh, based on what he thinks it should be at that time. Oh sure, and he has hundred percent. He can do that, but we can also be like, nah, back to him. As in, like that, that ain't Star Wars. It's this one. We can we no. can be critical of it, and there there is a to me. There's always like, a, even if I disagree with it, or if I disagree with those changes or whatever, there is some like point of resignation. Where I'm like, well, he is the creator, right? Whereas if it's someone else fucking with it, I have a bigger problem with it. Um, even though I can still like criticize if I think that it was silly to do this or that. This is what I'm talking about. Paul Duncan is asking him specifically about midichlorians. Introduce him in episode one as indicators of the force. George talks. This is cosmology. The force is energy. The fuel without everything fall apart. Force a metaphor for God. God is essentially a noble behind another metaphor, which fits so well that I couldn't resist it. And he talks about midi uh, midichlorians and mitochondria, blah, blah, blah. This is where it gets interesting. That's why I split into the personal force and the cosmic force. The personal force is the energy field created when your cells interacting, doing things while we're alive. When we die, we lose our persona and our energies that simulate to the cosmic force. If we have enough midichlorians in our body, we can have a certain amount of control over our personal force and learn to use it, like the Buddhist practice of being able to walk on hot coals. Some people can't because they just don't have as many midichlorians. That's, that's just genetics. Right. That right there is a pretty definitive statement. This is talking about, in the aftermath, obviously, Talking about how is shown in the prequels that not everyone can use the force. Yeah, yeah. it's just gen it's just genetics. Right, that's pretty definitive. I remember and, reading that. Yeah, and I yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, we've said before the world reflects the fact that not everyone can use it because we see very few people using it, like in the OT, for example. Yeah, and well, okay, so you know, I'm gonna play devil ad advocate here. So, what makes you think that Sabine doesn't have that level of potential i i personally think that considering the amount of time that she was around jedi including the training she got from jedi and all of these things and all this other time spent with ahsoka that we have it's a mystery as to how much that actually was mm -hmm. i think it's a little bit wild for her to only get it now to have not discover that or like to finally have this breakthrough now i think it's a little crazy yeah, um, I agree with that. But, what I also, yeah, but, I agree that's the reason I say that, but the reason I say that is that argument almost doesn't matter because it's very clear the way that Dave and uh, the actress who plays Sabine have talked about it. That they make it very clear that they're going for anyone can use the force. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, broom to boy, be fair, right? George did say that in an interview in 1979 or 1980 when he was like before Empire Strikes Back came out. He did say that, that it was effectively just like a, a skill that you could learn, right? Some people are inherently better at it, but it's a skill that anyone could learn. He changed all of that when he really delved into middle chlorians and explaining the force. Right. So. Yeah. No. I, no disagreement there whatsoever. Well, then. <laughs> on the um on the Han shot first thing, I, like I, I think it's a really great character moment. It gives you everything you need to know about him. Uh, so quickly, and then to go back and be like, oh, I don't want him to be shooting people before they shoot at him, though. Feels so insecure about Han as a character. It's like, he's so familiar with this underground, almost, of, of this world, as well as what Greedo's doing and what's going on with Jabba, that he knows he's going to try and kill him, so he kills him first, right? Like, that shit's cool. 
and kind of cunning too. And so having an author be like, oh, I don't know, that seems a little bit mean. I'd be like, just leave it alone. Stop touching it. <laughs> like, just, just leave it. it. And it also, to me, like Han's not some great dude. Right, he's a dude that's in debt. He's on the run. Like, there's people coming after him. Like, he's made yeah. a lot of bad decisions in his life. Yeah, and it's it's okay to show that he's got some rough edges around him. Right, right. Like, and it makes the journey he goes on and the decision he makes to come back, the decision he makes to stay as long as he does in Empire, and all that character development we get all the way up through seeing him partying with the Ewoks on Endor at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. It makes all that more powerful to see where this guy came from to where he is now. And that's what makes it so depressing and disappointing yeah. when they made the decision to revert him back to his like 1.0, Han Solo 1.0 in Force Awakens. Well, you yeah. assume at the end of New Hope when he's trying to convince Luke to run away, basically, that it's like, that's the correct decision, right? And then he sees all these people doing something heroic and he's like, fuck, maybe, fuck, maybe we should do something. And then does it. And then from that on, he's very different. Like Empire is already different than in uh, A New Hope. It's like Aunt May says, there's a hero in all of us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like in, yeah. uh, we, you know, me and Molly just watch Madam Web because we hate ourselves. Yeah, what's well, it about? I don't, is this a Marvel film? It's about a, a madam who webs. It's a prequel to Spider-Man, okay? That's what it is. It what's sets it? up <laughs> Spider-Man. It, it's actually a prequel to a Spider-Man spinoff. <laughs> It's not even any of the three different Spider-Man continuities. It can't actually apply to any of them, continuity-wise. It's so funny. <laughs> I don't know if well, they so did what, that. What is it? Is it Spider-Girl? So it's Madam Web and three different variations of Spider... Well, Spider-Girl, Spider-Woman. And yeah. I forget what the Latina one's name is, or what her superhero name is. It's like Arachnid or something. I, I don't remember. But mm -hmm. um, it's set in 2003... And it's about somebody whose mom in the 1970s, I think, was in the Amazon looking for a cure for some genetic disease that her daughter had that some spider was the key to getting. And she eventually develops these like psychic powers where she can see parts of the future and she doesn't know what's going on. But she knows that these girls are all being hunted by this bad dude who happened to be the same bad dude who got the spider that her mother was actually after and murdered her mother. Um, and essentially the entire thing is setting up the fact that at some point in time, these three other spider girls are going to get powers and they were going to kill the bad guy. So he wanted to kill them before that happened. Mm -hmm. They don't actually have powers in this movie. Um, you just nope. have a couple of visions of them having powers. They don't uh, even get power origins in this movie. Yeah. Well, and, boring. but it's all Dan. The thing that's crazy is it's all dancing around. It's all dancing around Spider-Man. That, that's the thing. This is a Sony Spider-Man universe that doesn't have fucking Spider-Man. Peter Parker's literally in this movie as a baby, and they never say his name. Oh, holy shit. It's it's there. <clears throat> I was going to say, the way you're explaining it, it seemed uh, interesting if they all have ended, ended up getting powers, but <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Well, they're out of continuity with all three of the Spider-Men that they could use, so they'd have to make another one, I guess. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. Um, apparently, it wasn't the original plan to make it line up with Andrew Garfield's, and then they were like, oh shit, we've got the wrong timeline. Yeah, and they're like, oh shit, let's go Tom Holland, because I think originally it was supposed to be in like set in the 90s, then they shifted up to the 2000, 2003, and mm -hmm. they had to like remove a bunch of references. When I saw that Blockbuster video in like one of the opening sequences, I was like, okay, like Blockbuster was around 2003, but it was kind of like starting to be on its way out. That feels like a 90s reference, but somewhat, yeah. Know. Interesting. Is it on streaming? No, it's in a theater. <laughs> It'll be coming to streaming soon. Uh, I can guarantee that. Won't, yeah, it won't cool. be in theaters long. But what the reason I brought that up after you said the Aunt May thing was, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Kind of that simple quote is really like so defining to a character and a superhero like Spider Man. Yeah. Well, they change it a little bit in this movie. They change it to once you accept responsibility, you will gain great power. Which has a whole different meaning, mm -hmm. um, and is a little more <laughs> evil <laughs> that's pretty, in a yeah, way. I was say. But uh, but that's what she has to do with it. She has to accept responsibility for these three girls, and when she does that, she gains great powers to 
be in multiple places at once somehow. And I, I don't know. It yeah, interesting. interesting. Great. Um, Ghost clones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, you gonna you gonna be watching Bad Batch tomorrow night? Or you gonna watch it when later this week? Well, I'll, I mean, I, I'll, watch I'll it keep up to date with it just for you guys because I love you guys so much. Well, you got three to watch this week because uh, they're they're premiering three tomorrow night. How long are they? Like twenty minutes. Like twenty minutes. I can do that. I've suffered through much worse. All right. Poor Mahler. I All think right, Mahler's well, gonna love it so much he's gonna binge seasons one and two. Yeah, I'm just gonna be imagine. like, man, I gotta know just the imagine. backstory yeah, attack. Yeah. Imagine he watches it and he's just like, I actually love this show. It is amazing. I'm like, I gotta know how Wrecker became this dumb. How many? Yeah, but that's the funny. That's the cool part is that all their powers go like all his powers went to his muscles versus his brain. <laughs> that's <laughs> the cool part. Yeah, it's cute. No. All right. This may be mean spirited, but Suicide Squad going below a thousand players sounds like a victory. It is. They we just got to knock thousand, off yeah. that one, and then we'll be good. That sucks. What's up, Darth Traitorous? What's up, Matic? Did you know that there is a six-hour cut of The Phantom Menace? Jake Lloyd talked about it and said it's bizarrely good. Would you like to see it? Hell yes. Yes, yes. in a heartbeat. That'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Mahler, could you give us a non-review of Madam Web blaming the audience and movie producers for its failure in Chris Stuckman's voice? I just think that the audience, they, they've they not treated this film well. And that's not fair. The, the directors and the writers, they've worked so hard. And I think that we'll come to learn someday that when you try to make a film, you'll realize just how hard it is and that Madam Web truly is a triumph. So apologize for your negative reviews, and maybe one day we can have peace. I don't know who Chris Stuckman is. <laughs> is he the writer? <laughs> Buy my book. He's a guy who has gone rel- just somewhat viral for saying basically we shouldn't really be uh, bashing films anymore. And the way that he phrases it is, I'm not going to review Madam Web because I'm not going to bash the film which implies any review of it that's negative is bashing it, which I think a lot of people have taken a lot of issue with. Pretty dumb. Yeah. I bashed it. Get stuckmanized. But I bashed it because it was bad. I bashed it because it's bad, and I'll bash it again. Fuck you. (laughs) It's a shitty film. I think it's time to give uh, Movie Bros a revival. What's up, Zach? Ryan is unintentionally the most outlandish and out-of-pocket show host. Lameo, Ryan, I love you. Theory and Mahler, y'all got to watch RK's energy. Match RK's don't energy. Match it. No, no, the we, whole point we, is we don't, don't match it. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the funny part. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like People just turn this on, and these guys are even keel, and I'm fucking losing my mind over some fucking cartoon. So I'll tell all <laughs> 3,500 of you here right now, if you can all hit like. Um, so we're going to be making a plushie of the three of us, so you can now take us home with you. So that's stay cute. tuned for that. It's going to be one plushie with three of us. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it actually might be one plushie with three heads, or it just might be each of us put together. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Look at Ryan that. has to have some sort of like outlandish expression. like. Yeah, somewhere. I'm known for those. Yeah. Mahler loves New Zealand. Lord of the Rings did film there. That is a reason true. to love them. It's true. Mm-hmm. What's up, theory? Big fan. If Stannis is not Azor Ahai, do you think it could be possible that it's Danny? And I have no idea what you're talking about. He, he's talking about uh, Azor Ahai, Song of mm-hmm. Ice and Fire. Uh, it's definitely not Stannis. Oh yeah, I have no idea what that. I. What? Uh, Ryan, Lord I would love it if all the Azor High potentials were able to like meet somewhat, other than the ones that have died, like when you get to the late game. But uh, just the idea that all of them think it'll be them or something. Yeah. Well, or like it gets introduced, like because some of the people that we think it is have no idea about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like have no concept of them being it, or the idea of one of them being Lightbringer and not Azor High or whatever. Mm hmm. Um, Game of also, Thrones shit theory. All right, cool. Stannis' yeah, death was horrible in the Game show. Game of Thrones or House of Dragon? Um, Game of Thrones. 
But oh. yeah, it's it's tough with only one season of Shoot Game of Thrones. Thing. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't even talk about Game of Thrones dragon. anymore. Just switch it over to a Song of Ice and Fire forever now, because <laughs> it's any theorizing. It's not going to be about Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is dead. It's a uh, Maybe about House of the Dragon, though, you know, until it gets its uh, completion. Was that going to be three seasons or more? I think four. Four now, is it? I don't think they sh- I don't think they need four. I think they should have probably done three. But considering season two is only eight episodes, if the rest are eight episodes, I can kind of buy them doing four seasons. The thing is, if season two is as good as season one, then it's going to get hyper hype. And, and then they're going to be like, we should probably get this to last longer than three seasons if we can. Like it, it should like That's how it goes on it. They can't do it though. This is a closed end. Um, well, that's the nice thing about this story is that it's actually finished. Right? Yeah, yeah. And there's a, a definitive end to it. Um, I suppose the irony is that Game of Thrones desperately needed more seasons and more time, but the other creators were like, "Yeah, we want to go." This is boring. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we want to go make a Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, what they tried to do didn't work out very well. Ryan, why is everyone shitting on Beardo? Are you guys getting him on Sports Wars or something? So, I make a joke, or are they actually like? I mean, I make the majority of the videos over on Sports Wars. So, like, it'd be like if I came and made a video on your channel, people, you know, or appeared on your channel on a stream. Some there's going to be some people that might not like it too much. Um, Make Sports Wars great again. Stop trying to make boring Beardo happen. He's not going to happen. Anywho, it's been my new favorite stream. Thank you, I Bacoco. Hey, Beardo's. uh, Thanks, bro. He's he's grinding over there. So I appreciate the help. But I I hear you. I'm, make, I'm making videos too. Thank you for showing your love to my mall tattoo. Oh, of course, man. Looks great. Take off. <laughs> One thing I'm interested in to see is if all Delta Squad members will be called in to take down the Bad Batch or if all Bad Batch members die in the finale. I don't think they die, man. If you haven't noticed the theme, they don't really kill anybody. Yeah, but it's the last season, right? So it's time to kill people. Silence. That's that's an inch. You didn't want to read that. Sorry, I I something to do with the sabers. I was sorry. My prediction for Bad Batch: Tech is alive. Hunter will die at the end. Crosshair will get the chip out and take over the Bad Batch at the end. Omega has the force. Omega obviously is force sensitive. Like hundred percent. Like a hundred a hundred percent. Um, sorry, Mauler. Spoiler. Wow. I was the just one, getting into it. The one female clone also happens to have the force. I love it. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, I remember you saying. Okay. So that's the full team, huh? Tech, Hunter, Crosshair. Rekka. And Omega. And, and Rekka. Was there, was there characters? And Echo. The, like, is this, of this some that have died before? Or nobody died in this whole show? Um, we thought Echo was dead for a long time. Um, he got saved uh, in a episode that we saw a couple years ago basically hmm. he got saved became part of the bad batch um tech there's a i mean it looked to me i thought tech died at the end of season two they should have him they should have let him die it was even for somebody that doesn't like the show um i had someone show me the you know watch the last couple episodes to kind of see what it was like and it's like yeah even for somebody that doesn't like the show that was a good like ending it's okay to have people die especially if it's like emotionally impactful and you should leave it that way but no they'll probably he'll probably be fine just a flesh wound just Sorry, a boys. Wound. <clears throat> what's up Corey? what's up Liu? filthy casual how ryan feels about the star wars is how i feel about the halo show right now i'm also losing my mind how do you say optimistic theory it's amazing I don't honestly, dude. Like, I sometimes feel like, like the way Ryan talks to me. Sometimes I feel like I'm wrecker. Like I'm just like, I don't know, just kind of <laughs> seeing the best in. Well, okay, look, man. To be real, the way I look at it, without tooting my own horn, it's just kind of like how I would want them, or how I would think any logical person would write the stories going forwards. So you know, forgive me for sometimes feeling like optimistic. I just think like, well, there's no other option than them to write this, which would be badass, which is my own theory or my own thoughts. But then they'd go and do something stupid, and it just doesn't end up the same way that I thought it would. So you know, I don't, I don't point... think that's unreasonable. It's because um, I guess what my point of view would be is like, just how many how many times do you think they'd have know. to release something shitty before you you'd sort of be like, 
uh, you know, because I, you know, like Marvel, like it took a while for them to annihilate the MCU in terms of every character and every plot line they had, but they did it over the course of phase four and five. Um, as you, I don't know if you've noticed, but like online discourse for that franchise has just plummeted. Like it used <laughs> to be that anything could come out and people would just go crazy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The first, the first one we noticed it with, uh, on EFAB anyway, was, uh, Moon Knight. Where like usually a thing comes out and then a month later or so people are like that wasn't very good but Moon Knight like died on its finale. I don't know if uh, Ryan watched it or not, but that is the only MCU show that I didn't make it all the way through. Or they had a kaiju through. fight at the end and it was embarrassing. It was like giant gods fighting each other while everyone's having an awkward battle and stuff, and CG wasn't very good and just everyone was just like, "What the fuck is this crap?" It reminds me of Secret Invasion. Where people thought it was going to be like a thriller, like espionage and stuff, and then at the end there was a giant fight between big CGI monsters with lasers and stuff. And it's just like, oof. One Division did the same thing. At the end, there's a big fight with lasers. Yeah, right. And um, so like it, it seemed that people could only take so much, and like now, uh, you had Love and Thunder was hated pretty much soon after it came out. Oh, and God. then you fast forward yeah. to the Marvels, and I think that like nobody's really took the time to say like, "Oh, this one was good." It's like, "Nah, come on, <laughs> we we all know it's fine." And yeah, uh, it, you know, like, what's the future look like? And it's like most of the people don't even know. We, we, that's the news. Yeah. We don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore, and that they're bleeding all over the place. And so, what I guess I'm saying is like, Star Wars just feels like it's inevitably going to be in the exact same position. The only reason it hasn't so far is they haven't been releasing movies. I think it's just my creative side that comes out, and I'm like, well, this would be dope. I mean, I've been doing fan fictions and stuff well before I even had the channel, so for me, whenever I see an issue or, uh, you know, like a, a shitty story that they write, I'm like, well, you know, there's only one option to fix this, but somehow they keep having incompetent people do things that just don't feel right. <laughs> so it's, uh, I, would, I would literally have to think the opposite, like what would be shit and then I'd be like, oh, that's what they're going to do. Then I would completely change my tune. But I just, I'm always hopeful that, you know, not even hopeful. I'm just like, oh, well, this is the only answer for them to do this. So never did I think that they're going to freaking do, uh, uh, the zombies would be the, what the, the night, with the, what the fucking witches. <laughs> I, I did, dude, like, I didn't that see that coming. Was... I didn't see that coming. Uh, dude, I, I thought that was going to be like, a little thing like that's like okay of course they're all gonna be they're all zombies uh, already that's kind of what i thought that, yeah i never yeah. thought that was like the main freaking thing i thought like they're gonna resurrect like freaking darth maul or create some being to be like imbued with the dark magic to be like savage Press and come in and just fuck ahsoka up i hate that name by the way savage mm, just wait till you just wait to meet the character in season four of clone wars when you start to watch it what I the think fuck they're... is wrong with savage you are joking, right? Savage Oppress. What do you mean? Savage Oppress. He's dope. You don't like... You haven't even seen Clone Wars. He says he doesn't like the name. He said he didn't like... He didn't say he didn't like the character. He says he didn't like the name. All right. Well, whatever. I, I mean, I'm not a big... I, I'm not a big, like, hey, let's snap our fingers and fucking make a super super powerful force bean well like, i was about to say breath, but... how would you feel ryan if uh the magical ladies uh resurrected a ghost doth bowl evil but it was gonna be like bleh, 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 bleh. what would you have said how would you have felt would have been better than freaking what we got i would have i would have been i would have lost my mind um <laughs> i would have lost my mind 100 percent. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I well, the way i look at the it. fuck out i would have been really upset it's like if they take the most force sensitive Zabrak, Dathomir, and whatever that they got there, and then they just imbue him with dark magic, with Night Sister magic, and then they uh, have him trained by so, like Count Dooku. This is interesting because it, it does feel like this is the difference between how we're sort of watching the shows. When I saw them casting their big old spell, and if you'd ask, if you pause me in that moment and said, What could they do here that would make you go, Fuck, that is awesome? I would have said to you, like, I don't know. I don't know what they could summon that would make me think, wow, what a great writing decision. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, like, I'm trying to think of all the different things as possible. And like, if I saw Darth Maul, I probably would have been angrier than I was at the zombies. I'd have been like, whatever, zombies are dubbed, that's stupid. But Darth Maul would be like, for fuck's sake, another big old key well, jangling. The thing Maybe not Darth weird Maul. about the zombies is like, we, we're being pressed, we're being told that, oh, he's really low on troops and blah, 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 and can't sacrifice these. Got these bitches who can just like resurrect people at will. Like, yeah. and it's not like like they're working with him. 
like it's not like you'd have to do a ton to convince them to do it so that was the thing that didn't make any sense to me how that was like the big reveal when it's like you could have just been doing this the entire time yeah literally that's like the big fuck i need, I need to call for a favor once it's like what you just resurrected a bunch of zombies were you it, kidding me it would have been cooler to me um the idea that all of his troops are already zombified. They're already imbued with Night Sister Magic. That's how they they're being are. kept alive. Like you know what I mean? Like that they freaking out. That's what I thought was going that's down. That's what I thought it was too. And that's why I thought they had the rags on him and all the stuff. Yeah, dude. Um and I, I don't know. I, I think that you could have done things so much different. I I was convinced for a while when I first heard about and you know the idea of doing the Ahsoka series and Thrawn and everything. I thought they were really obviously they're trying to rip off here to the Empire. I thought they were really gonna sure. go for it and have Thrawn, and he is kind of doing that with the Night Sisters, but have Thrawn try to utilize the Force in some way. And I thought it would have at least been an interesting concept for him and Ezra to be trapped on this in this galaxy together, so be forced to work together and almost come to like this agreement. And like, so understanding, maybe Thrawn could have swayed Ezra, who had already showed dark tendencies before, that maybe Ezra and Thrawn could legitimately be working together, and Ezra could be the Sabaoth to, to Thrawn, just like we saw near to the Empire. Uh, I thought that would have been interesting instead of him literally just fucking off a couple kilometers away and Thrawn never deciding to kill the one dude who thwarted him and who's going to thwart him again. But that's just me. I think, you know, making a perhaps like a Savage Press kind of being out of like a, <laughs> they bring out like some Zabrak scrawny dude and turn him into Captain America, you know, whatever. Why not? It would have been cooler than what we got. What else are but they like, going to do? That's, that sucks, though, doesn't it? Like, what else we got? Of course that's kinda... it sucks. Of course it sucks, but, you, but there's no way. Look, here's what I would have done. I've been like, okay, you know what? Night Sisters, I need you to give me the location of... And then they cut to the next scene or whatever. And then who is the person that he wants the location of? And he goes and gets her or has a, a freaking squad go get her? Barris Afi. <sighs> the, the way that I look at this stuff is like, what, what can we do as a payoff? Maybe it involves Morgan Elspeth, right? She's going to be dying at the end of this season. And like, okay, well, we need to kind of fucking roll it back because Morgan Elspeth doesn't have character. She doesn't have investment. We need to write it now. So yeah. we set a bunch of groundwork to make her hate Ahsoka particularly. Yeah. Give him some kind of personal back and forth. Maybe that's actually additionally why she stays behind. She's like, I'm going to fucking kill her, that sort of thing. Give us anything. I would appreciate literally that, like, Ahsoka, through battling her in season two, killed her father or something like that. Some he was shit. just one of the, you know, the shotgunner guy? Like, that just turns out to be someone that Ahsoka killed casually, and that was her dad. He was the security fucking leader. Literally that. One out of ten something character so that she can be like, Classic Star Wars. Nice. You killed my fucking father. I'm gonna beat you up, silly tentacle head lady. And she's gonna be like, "Wow, that's racist." <laughs> and then they fight. It'd be great. But no, yeah. there was, there was, this is what I mean by like, I didn't know what could possibly happen from a perspective of me going like, "Oh, wow, that's a really well written payoff." Because there's no setup for anything. Yeah. We're just sort of watching stuff happen. Like when when Sabine tosses uh, Ezra onto the ship, I think just everyone was like, "She could do. She could do that." Okay, she could do that. Oh, she, she could they do. fly now. Yeah. And what I guess I'm getting at is not that I have no hope or that I think there's no options. It's that we need to go, we need to fucking plant seeds way further back. When By the time we get to the end of a, the last episode, we're fucked. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, there's a lot of different things they could have done, but um, you don't like the idea of Barris, Ryan? I, I hate what they did to Barris in TCW in general, like how, how they changed her character. They were fucking terrorists, but... Um, I, I, I am. I don't want them to keep bringing back random people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but she's we, still we, around. We, yeah, but there's an unlimited amount of people who may or may not be still around that we didn't technically see killed, and then you bring them back as like, well, who else survived? Um, I am totally of the opinion that, like, you could theoretically, you know, we haven't found out exactly what happened to her, so I agree she's out there. It's a possibility, but. I am totally of the opinion that they need to stop bringing back these characters and make new characters move forward with that. Because guess what? The characters that they're bringing in, all they're doing is hurting them more. They can't actually like write them effectively. So all you end up doing is destroying a character that had some value before. So they need to focus on making new characters for people to get behind and people to um, like start actually being fans of. How many characters have they created in the past decade that people actually want more of in a different way 
they're holding um, yeah. I, well well i would say <laughs> as much as i think the storylines are kind of mid for the games i do think that cal kestis is a character that people like um mm. You know, they, they've done that. And that, I don't know how much Lucasfilm was even involved in that and how much of it was just Respawn. But I think Cal Kestis is one of the few characters you can say that people want to see more of him, even though that's just another Jedi who survived Order 66. Um, but there, it's few and far between when it comes to that. But that's what you have to have to push this franchise forward. Because every time they go back and dig somebody else up, they end up destroying it or they fuck up canon or they turn this character into somebody they were never meant to be. Babu Frick. Yes, Babu Fricks. The Fricks. A lot yeah. of... Uh, the Frick like family the need to be further explored. I agree with that. I know some people who really love the Fricks in Mandalorian Season 3. Thanks to Book of Boba Fett, I know that a pointy stick is a more reliable way to kill someone than an actual lightsaber. Yep. Pointy stick. Who killed someone with a pointy stick? Well, he quote unquote killed Cad Bane. Uh, Cad Bane, yeah, but he's not dead. No, nah, no, no one's ever really gone, especially if it's a stick. Cobb Vant <laughs> isn't gone either. No, nope, nope. he's back already, he's pretty back. much. Hey, Ryan Theory Mauler Morph has butts three times with Logan. What? God, you can't read sometimes. <laughs> it says Morph has butt sex with Logan. Oh. <laughs> Right. Morph has butt three has times. Butt three times. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay. Mm. Ryan, you're crazy. Everyone knows that proton torpedoes can't melt reactor cores. Don't get me started <laughs> on docking base seven zero BBY. What it was an inside job. Oh man, let's not get into that. I don't know if they allowed those uh, Death Star conspiracy theories on YouTube. Yeah, I might get shut down. Bill C eleven here in Canada. Hello there. Your favorite French guy here. What's up, Pierre Garcin? You look like um, his face, Superman. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor. Been a long time since my last super chat. Just wanted to say I love the new dynamic with the three of you. May the force be with you all. Wow, I'm glad you like it, man. Chat, do you guys like the dynamic we got going on here? I know the answer is yes. I just want engagement, so spam one. Well, to be fair, I hope that a lot of them say no as well because that means we cause tension, conflict. Which is even better. I, I don't know. For a time when Star Wars is like dead, the views here, the live stream viewers are insane. 3,500 live, like in, in the most dry time of Star Wars. I mean, pretty good. Well, I mean, you know, amazing. not to fucking look behind the curtain, so to speak, but the whole reason why this can last a lot longer than three people who know really everything about each other and they're talking about new Star Wars stuff would probably die quicker is because we don't actually know a lot of each other's backgrounds fully about what we know and think about Star Wars. Yeah, and we so disagree so, yeah. and have different yeah. opinions on shit. But yet yeah, we're mates. And, yeah, and like, we have completely different ways of thinking. Yep. Not just about Star Wars, but about yeah. life, I think, in a lot of ways. So, it's good. Maybe. I don't think so. Well, I mean, who knows, right? We haven't explored a lot. That's, that's kind of the future of this show, in theory. <laughs> yeah. In Star Wars theory. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Maybe this guy's a racist next to me. Who knows? Ryan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me? I search the search YouTube. Yeah. It's literally an autocomplete on tags. Like when you're like tagging a video, like Ryan Kennel. Right below is trash and Batman review is is racist. So wow, nice. Hey, yeah. you made it. <laughs> I made it. Hey, Therian Mueller, can you debate ESB versus Revenge of the Sith? Do you, like which one's better? Which do you prefer? Is Revenge of the Sith your favorite? It really depends. They both have such different feels. Uh, Revenge of the Sith, I'd say, is... Right now, I'm leaning towards... Uh, it's tough, man. They're both Re Revenge so of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie. Definitively, Empire Strikes Back is a better... Like, take a step back, a better movie. movie. But uh, I love Revenge of the Sith. It's my favorite Star Wars movie all time. I really like uh, Revenge of the Sith. I like all the prequels. I think I would say I love Revenge of the Sith. I thoroughly enjoy watching it. Uh, warts and all sort of thing. I mean, fuck, they're just both so great. But like ESB is, is that's just top tier to me. Empire is uh, yeah. bitching. If Mahler was able to read, I would tell him to uh, read the Revenge of the Sith novelization to see how much cool shit was left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. 
I know. But he can't read, so I won't. I can barely hear. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll say Revenge of the Sith. The real question is, where's Bosk? Uh, He's going to show up somewhere. Oh, hey, what about like best payoff in all of Star Wars? All Star Wars content ever for the three of us. Payoff? Yeah, so just big moment. Oh, well, I mean, I'm your father. Interesting. I would choose the throne room, probably, with uh, Luke sparing Vader. Uh, the biggest yeah. payoff? Well, what, what What exactly do you mean by payoff? Yeah, yeah I was going to say because, like, Vader moment. and Luke... Like, surprise? So, it could be a couple things, right? Someone killing someone, or someone revealing something, or a sequence of action, or a sequence of uh, intrigue that okay, gets explained. Well... Anything in particular that comes to mind of a section? I didn't want to say scene. I would rather say payoff. I'd say the most emotional for me would have to be either when Anakin is racing uh, to find his mom, just that, that moment in the desert where he can mm -hmm. duel the fates, or when um, um, Luke is saying, Father, please, and then Vader's looking back and forth and then lifts the Emperor. Yeah, yeah. Those are so, big ones. Probably. It, yeah. to, to me, I think that, like, Battle of the Heroes in Revenge of the Sith when you're because when I think of payoff, I think of things I'm anticipating and shit like that. Whereas I was yeah. never anticipating, you know, Vader being Luke's father the first time I watch Empire, right? Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So when I think of payoff, it's like something I'm like anticipating. And to that, you know, cutting between that and, you know, Yoda and Palpatine's. But I think that to me is as a Star Wars fan in a fucking theater. That to me has to be like the best payoff of all. Like a big one for me was Order sixty six. I was so sad watching all the Jedi get killed. I was like, it's yeah. not fair, especially yeah. because of the fact that they felt so um, almost invincible in the uh, after the first two prequels. You're like these fuckers, they can't be dealt with. But then you see Kiadi Mundi. He he was leading them. He was going across that yeah. bridge, and boom, they traded him. Game over, dude. I wish we wouldn't have had that leaf in front of uh, uh, Ayla Sakura. We could have just seen her. I want to see the the blaster bolts hit her. I think otherwise, otherwise we otherwise she could be alive. <laughs> she will be alive. You watch. Damn, dude. Dark. Over under fifty percent. Ahsoka shows up in Bad Batch. Oh, surely, but surely, surely she's not showing up, right? I don't think so, man. Why would she? That would be funny, though. I, well. Why, why why would she still be alive, um, period? Um, I don't know. I'd have to... Listen, if Filoni's name is attached anywhere, there's always going to be a chance that Ahsoka shows up, just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say 50. I would say 20%. Oh, sick. Is that Balin and Shin? Cool. Why tell stories Ooh. around the Skywalker saga? Leave it be. Acolytes is too close for comfort now. Why not do Xana? Disney loves female characters, and it's an untold story. I would love to see the Bane trilogy, though. Yeah, so, uh, ironically, um, two of my most highly anticipated... Obviously, we all hate women here. Uh, but two of my most highly anticipated Star Wars projects before Disney bought Star Wars was uh, the Darth Zana, getting Darth Zana's story after we saw the Darth Bane trilogy, which Drew Carpishan was more than willing to do. And also, the Sword of the Jedi trilogy which was about Jaina Solo, who's the daughter of Han and Leia. Um, that, that would have taken place probably around 45 to 50 years ABY. Um, would have been fucking awesome. Those are two of my most highly anticipated projects that got shit canned when Disney bought Star Wars. Well, Ryan, now you have Acolyte, so. Exciting stuff. I am excited for that, for not because I think it's going to be good, but... You know, I always thought the premise was good, and then found out Leslie Headland was saying the things she said, and I'm like, uh, okay. And her favorite her... Star Wars is all the Star Wars, by the way. <laughs> is that what she said? Yeah, she was asked what her favorite Star Wars movie is. She's like, I love all the Star Wars. I just nice. want to live in the universe in perpetuity. Cool. That's what she said. Nice. Maybe because yeah, she couldn't name one. Even though it was at the Rise of Skywalker premiere. I could at least probably name that one. She could have turned around and seen the board behind her. Well, it seems like you know she wanted to be political and uh, give an answer that no one can really say anything about. Maybe. It means she wants to be liked. 
Are you going to do a watch party for the episodes, Ryan? I don't. I don't. I've never done a watch party before. I don't think I'd be very entertaining. I think. Um, I, I am. What do you mean? Like I usually when I watch stuff, I'm just like this. That's usually me as well. That's me. And I don't even really like when I'm not interact when I don't have any other people. I don't really laugh like or I don't know. Yeah. But, no, I'm not like one of those people that's like, oh my god, did you see that? Oh wow. He no. vader. Oh. Do you point out that it's red? He's <laughs> he like these memes. Red. Does... <laughs> what? I feel bad. I don't have to make make him say mean things about <laughs> anyone that he doesn't want. Oof. Mahler did a video compiling a lot of interesting reactions to ahsoka and mm -hmm. uh yeah that's where that it's red comes from you'd have to watch oh. this video to understand it where is this it's, it's the on the video. channel called mauler yeah i know that but oh what sorry. Is, what's the video called it's the ahsoka one it's my only ahsoka one it's, oh. my it's probably video. like one video ago it's like the 30 minute one right it's literally the newest video i think still because that's uh <laughs> Wait, it's been that long since you uploaded a video motherfucker i Take He's forever. got another channel. Ah, I upload a Mooler. He already like answer. that is true though. I make shit tons of stuff on Mooler. It's like five months your ago. Your primary channel is my secondary channel. Five months ago, hell yeah. And it was literally just he got so angry at Ahsoka episode five that he had to make a video. Otherwise, we still wouldn't have seen one yet. My subscribers are the starving in the desert people, and I'm like. And he's not willing channel, to just okay? piss down their throat to keep them no. alive, right? <laughs> no. He waits, he goes, he prepares a nice meal, a five-course dinner while they're starving in the desert, and then he slowly walks it back to them, and once a year, you get fed and you stay alive. I set the plate down next to the skeletons. <laughs> like, you guys yeah, some of them die it. off, and the others are like, oh, Mahler, thank you. I imagine if you released one of those videos once a week. Why the that's not we we could have a whole episode talking about how we make stuff because i uh like no like the, like a you, you could have your long ones that are like six hours long like i see here and then you could have the ones that are like you know you have one that's uh what's the second channels for oh yeah oh. okay all right fair enough J Bach for one nine nine says no fat mace window equals terrible season. Simple as that. Well, at least we can all agree on that. Hey Ryan, what do you think about Mace Windu coming back in Star Wars? Um, what what do I think of Samuel L. Jackson hitting the point in time where he's just willing to do anything? It is what it is. Obviously, we know what theory is doing with Vader episode two and everything like that. Um, like to me. For them to bring again, I, I'm I'm tired of, I'm tired of Lucasfilm bringing back characters um, that we've seen before. It, it's time to move past this. It's time to tell new stories. Um, and I, I think that George intended for Mace Windu to die when he flew out that fucking window. That's what yeah, I of think. Course. Of course. Now the problem is, um, you know, when you once you get a mall, and I do think malls like the point. It's like. If you can justify him surviving, yeah, man, you you can really justify a lot of things. Um, so yeah, do I think that after seeing a dude cut in half, fall three hundred kilometers down a shaft, go to a garbage planet, live with a fucking worm for a decade, um, literally not be able to poop, not be able to shit because he has no asshole anymore? Do I think that that guy, if he can survive, can I buy the fact that Mace Windu just got his arm cut off and was thrown off a ledge and was able to survive? Yeah, I can. But I, I don't think he should be brought back. But also, he doesn't have the dark side. And Maul is very unique. This is what I, what I will say about Mace. Um, is that if there's any one on the Jedi Council that would be able to tap into the dark side, yeah. it's probably the practitioner of the pad. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, I could that's see that happening. Point. You know, that's a fair point. Yeah. That's yeah. And point. It's funny because with this one, I'm like fucking it would be amazing to have him back in his prime angry and vengeful and wanting to do all kinds of shit but like you know i would never believe in a million years that disney would be able to handle bringing back mace windu in any way shape or form that would be interesting yeah well i'm really happy with my script i think it i think everything's done really nicely and it makes sense and it's not like uh fan fictiony in a sense so 
I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to see it, and I hope you'll be at the premiere with me. That'd be cool. Yeah, it sounds fun. Yeah, man. Do you have any idea, like, what's what's the time frame left on that? I know you've obviously got stills and stuff you've shown and everything, but... Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, working every single day, it's costing me a lot every month. Um, working as fast as we can. Production got ramped up like crazy in January. So for episode two, the issue is that we're creating everything from the ground up. Like, we're literally from scratch. We're not using fucking Battlefront assets or whatever. We're literally making and rigging and doing all everything from the freaking vines that are on the the stone walls the brick walls to the characters themselves and their their cloth simulation and their facial expressions and the wrinkles and so it's extremely tedious work um but you know it's taken time and i, I believe the answer to your question is probably if you want to be extremely hopeful um december of 2024 if you want to be realistic probably summer of 2025 I'm more of a realist. Yeah, so I think, you know, summer would probably be a really good finished date. Um, if we want to go even further, then we could say, like, the winter of um, or the fall of 2025. But I think that's even too much of a stretch. But then the thing with that is since all the assets are created, then episode three will be relatively easy to make. So yeah, you've got see, a lot of it. You don't have to redo a lot of that work. Yeah, yeah. Hell no. It's all there, and we could probably release that a, a year afterwards. Maybe even sooner. So. Excited. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, very excited. Mm -hmm. Mahler told yeah. me he's going to be here for it. So, Oh, dude, I'd love it if you guys were there. I mean, I don't know if I'll do it in New York or in L.A., but we'll see. We'll see. We did the first one in L.A. Uh, if it's in the summer, man, maybe New York. What's easier for you guys to get to? I think New York for Mala, right? Fucking, I, I, that's not even. I haven't even met up with like all of the people that I've been. Right, I've well, known you, now for like four fucking, years. You gotta crawl out of the cave and get out a little bit. I don't care. Wear a mask or something. You could wear like a Phantom of the Opera mask. Mm. You could just use an accent the entire time. No one would have any idea. It's true. You could talk just, like Tarkin the entire time. Just wear a disguise. No, but that's what I want. I want to have like a huge meetup, a huge um, premiere, and uh, have like you, Jeremy, a whole bunch of YouTubers out there that I like. Um, yeah, it'll be good. And then all the fans and everything. It'll be great. Hell yeah. What's up, Mariana? Ahsoka and the Clone Wars are a huge part of my childhood and helped me through bad times. Hearing Ryan shit on it and fans like me is a fucking bummer and mood killer. I don't go and shit on the EU. Why does he and Mahler feel the need to do it? Why? Well, we're before, honest. Before they get it, before they get into, I I don't think they feel the need to shit on anyone's childhood. I think they're just speaking their mind, and you know, as a fan, they're able to kind of uh, give their point of view and and their opinion, which I think uh, should be encouraged. I feel like it's been absolutely bloody obvious that me and Ryan have stepped around upsetting anybody while trying to express what we think and feel about the state of the storytelling in Star Wars, not just now, but in the past. And the fact that this is considered offensive is actually sad. That's, that's pretty much my take on it. Yeah, I think that uh, I could be a lot harsher if I wanted to, but I'm giving my opinions, right? And sometimes my opinions are brutally honest about what I think about something. At the same time, I understand that that's my opinion. Sometimes I, I don't understand why theory could see something, watch something and see it like it's different than my opinion. Like, I saw this. How could you not be upset about that? I'm not sitting here trying to change his opinion or tell him that, you know, he's somehow better or worse than me for having that opinion. I'm just saying it's not something I agree with. Yeah, man. And for stuff in the EU, like books like Crystal Star, I'm going to shit all over that because I think it's bad. The Jedi Academy trilogy. I, by Kevin J. Anderson. Love Kevin J. Anderson. I think that series is kind of shit. And I think he gets his depictions of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo completely wrong. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm going to shit all over something if I don't think it's good. Because to me, um, if you, just like we kind of talked about Chris Duckman earlier, if all you do, if you never are willing to say you think something's bad or give your actual opinion when you do think it's bad, then your praise means absolutely nothing. That's how I feel about it. That's my perspective. So if you if you feel like um, by me talking about how much I don't like this character or I didn't like the Clone Wars or whatever, 
if you feel like that's a personal attack against you, um, that it's certainly not intended that way. It's me talking about the product itself. And spoiler alert, I might have a different opinion than you, and that's okay. If you want to criticize the expanded universe because you think there's some bad storytelling, go for it. I might have some arguments with you, just like you might have some arguments with me. But just because it's important to you doesn't mean that something's going to not get my actual opinion. That's how I feel. Well, and for the record, me and Ryan's power levels are much lower than necessarily we, we are on our meanest on other channels. <laughs> like we've got reputations that are probably worse than what we've said here today. This is what I mean about I'm just surprised. Like, really? What we've said here is already too much? Like, damn. Wait, you mean you tone it down here? Um, Don't do I that. adapt the audience a bit. Don't yeah, because what you I mean, have to remember, Theory, is that our audiences are used to like what we think and feel. So that we we are like more comfortable to just sort of like experiment with some other jokes or edgier sides of like the the points of view that we have. I but here, like, we don't want you to miss un. Well, so yeah. but the problem is we don't want you to misunderstand us. So when we say something like "God, this is the worst fucking shit," you'd be like, "Wait, that you think this is the worst?" And you're like, "No, no, no, I no, I, I'm just you know like that yeah, sort of I, like I'm miscommunication." Not, no, I'm not a fucking idiot. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. What, well, what's, I, the, what's the English I, word? Daft. Daft. That's a good one. <laughs> he's not. He's not saying we're being fake. What he's just saying is we're gonna make sure that some of we're gonna go a, a little bit of an extra mile because there's an audience that might not always be used to where we're coming from to yeah. try to explain maybe why we think that or this. That's they'll all. figure it out in time. They'll see what you're like. But no, by all means, I want you guys to be comfortable and just be yourselves. Yeah. And for the record, Mariana, I'm really glad that you have something that you love like that. Um. For me, that's obviously the expanding universe and shit. And I think for a lot of people, it's different areas of Star Wars. Um, but well, of our opinions, it's okay to have disagreements. Yeah, dude, everyone's supposed to have different opinions. I don't. It's I, I, you know I often use that uh, that freaking whenever people are like, oh yeah, you know this means a lot to me, and I, I it's like, well, I don't give a fuck if it means a lot to you. I'm gonna have my opinion. I'm not gonna like shut my mouth. When I'm speaking well, and, respectfully about something just because you like it a lot. Well, how about me? I don't like it a lot. And I'm going to voice my opinion. You know, so it's like, and it's the same vice versa for the other person. It's like, yeah. well, I don't expect them to shut their mouths just because I really like freaking Anakin Skywalker. You know how many years I got made fun of online because I was always pushing Anakin Skywalker and everything? But now he's like the fan favorite because it's the new fucking in thing. So it's like, whatever, man. Just speak your mind and just be respectful of the people and that's it. Well, it's worth bearing in mind, right? Like saying, you know, don't attack this thing. It's something that helped me in my childhood sort of stuff. It's like there are people out there who feel it destroyed their childhood, right? Literally. So how do we balance it between those two people? Like, are we supposed to say it's worse yeah. or better based on it? It's like, well, no, we'll just say what we think. We'll say what yeah. we believe, honestly. That's how I feel about The Last Jedi. Yeah. I mean, well, th th I, I would agree. I think that was the most, probably the most damage done Hold in on. like a single entity from the yeah. Star Wars canon. That was a... Uh, yeah. It was a stake to the heart, that one. Yep. Jaundice theory. Right. Bro, that guy's me. That's like me in like a weird filter. Hmm. That's my background, right? I think that's the joke of the three of us together, is it? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. That's the plushie. <laughs> <laughs> that's yellow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> holy shit it just needs the egyptian hat yeah 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 thing. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should do that maybe we should put the egyptian hat on ryan for his plushie pharaoh ryan Did we get canceled for that no i don't think so. maybe i, I think know. i'm uncancelable at this point i think we all are what show do y'all like more ahsoka or mandalorian <sighs> mandalorian um What's, what's I'll, I'll like? say Mandalorian as well, even though I don't like I'll, it. I'll do the nuance because I'm I'm the bestest ever. Uh, but I, I would take Ahsoka over Mando season three, but I would take Mando seasons one and two over Ahsoka. Because hmm. Jesus Christ, that's his season. Holy shit. Yeah. Super important. Did Anakin scrap his episode two saber after breaking it? Or did he build the graphics off the damaged portion of his episode two saber? I think he scrapped the whole thing. Yeah. Then you just remade it. Yeah, I don't know if you ever got it back. 
You know well, I mean? it was broken. It was fucked up. It, yeah, it was like fucked up and it wouldn't work in the factory. But like when after that would he have gotten it? You know what I mean? He wouldn't have. That's a story for a comic book. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I wish Star Wars was good instead of keys jingling. <gasps> I want actual stories. Hail the 199. Thank well, yeah, like, you know, if it were Savage Opress and they fought him and they beat him and he turned into like a black mist or something because he's like the fart from, you know, Morocco. <laughs> I mean, like, would you really be like, well, that finale was pretty good now? Like, like I assume you'd just be like, eh. No, it'd still be the same. It'd be like, eh. well, it'd be a little bit more exciting while I was watching, but it'd still be like, oh, okay. Hmm. This but is how I randomly am like, we are on the same page, I think. I'm not sure. Well, we got to keep asking questions to each other, I guess. Yeah. Let's wait till I see Madam Web and I'll love it. <laughs> I love how everyone talks about every single Star Wars animated show, but everyone ignores that Star Wars Resistance exists. Oh, dude, I don't even, I'd never watched and it. That, and that Dave Filani was the freaking architect of that? Yeah, I don't watch Aww. that. I don't watch that garbage. How much of it was there? I only know one person in my actual life that watched Star Wars Resistance. <laughs> um, I think there was two seasons. Is that right? Let's find out. Also, Mahler, I webbed to Madam Web. <laughs> <laughs> Rossi, I'm hoping Peridia is giving Sabine her power and it will Dude, disappear. There are, there are 50 episodes? After they get off the planet since Peridia is so rich. You're telling me there are 50 episodes of a Star Wars TV show that nobody cares about? Yeah, like probably twenty five episodes per season or something. Damn. It it it's takes place. I mean, it's about the fucking resistance. So it's a sequel series. Oh, no one to no one cares. And it also the animation's kind of strange. It is a little weird. I remember seeing the trailer for it, but I never watched any of it. It's about Dude, I had no idea. Damn. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't need to watch that one. Ryan, oh, take the bullet and watch all of it and tell us what it's like. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> We should all watch like that. That's the one. one thing I've avoided. But it actually does. It is kind of important. Um, the who is that uh, that cocksucker senator in Ahsoka <laughs> who's like, <laughs> like just like, well, you you were probably lying about that. Oh, of course, like that. You know, what I'm that talking guy. About? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the guy at the end. Yeah, yeah. What well, the guy in who's in works for the New Republic? That guy is, I'm pretty sure, the father of the kid from resistance like the main character from star wars resistance but i forget okay. his fucking name so he it is kind of important um you know, shout out to dave filoni for continuing to make those sequel connections that we always knew were going to happen looks like his name is kaz poe hey, dameron is tasking him with the job of spying on the secretive first order Ooh, oh, fuck uh yeah rossi <laughs> i don't think Peridia grants extra force powers because then everyone would be hyped up. Roided up. Wait, so did the New Republic not go to Mustafar and look into the castle? Find the Sith holocron? Keep it in a vault somewhere, maybe? So, I mean, there is reason to... If Mustafar was like a, a at least somewhat of a base for Empire so, dealings, you'd think the New Republic would be interested in cleaning it out. Okay. And if so, and if they did, they would have found the holocron, yeah. So the thing with there was a scene that was actually cut from the film. Um so there was this eye of the webbish bog, which is this massive spider head, and then on top of it is like this actual being that's controlling the head. Mm -hmm. It was I'm sorry, it was a massive head with a spider on top of the head. It was like a baby's head. Yeah, and <laughs> looked like something from Toy Story that came out of under Sid's bed. Yeah, literally, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 let me let me bring it up. And this Eye of the Webbish Bog essentially works as like a somewhat oracle, somewhat gatekeeper for the um, the Wayfinder. And not everyone can get it. And Kylo Ren got it. Here, right here. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. I remember because when the first uh, leaks came out, the actual Rise of Skywalker leaks that Mahler and I went over on EFAP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good times. This, this was still in it, I think. Like they hadn't cut this out yet. Yeah, this was in the leaks, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I think this would have been pretty cool. It would have been, a, and then so there's a comic where Vader goes and he actually like this gets the wayfinder from this creature thing, and 
And um, yeah, so I covered a comic from there. Well, but like the way ago. it's presented in the film is Kylo kills a whole bunch of creatures. I don't even know who or what they are. And then he opens up a tablet and there's the holocron, right? Like it's. Yeah, they cut assume... out this whole, this whole scene, which I think would have been really cool. But yeah. Yeah. So, not surprised, man. I don't know how much cooler it would have been than the rest of the movie. But... <laughs> I think it would have added to it. I think it would have been pretty fun to see. It would have been a little more mystic. and It, it, it is definitely like that scene would have it would have added a little more context to Kylo just randomly being on this planet that you didn't you might not even known was Mustafar. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, doing well, stuff like that. And, and the thing that I explained in the breakdown with the movie when it came out was that Mustafar looks like this now because of the game. Did you ever play the VR game? Nah, the I know. Vader it, Immortal. Do you know what happens? I've heard people talk about it. But... Yeah, basically, yeah. like you reset Mustafar back to what it was, and um, it's supposed to be like a green, lush planet. So now the planet's healing. Mm hmm. So, yeah. I have Webbish Bog. Oh. I would have liked to see it. Would have been neat. Big fan of the stream and glad to have Mahler and Ryan a part of it. Ryan or Theory, do you have any good Star Wars book recommendations? Or Ryan, you kill this question. Now. I have a million of them. If like if you haven't read them before, I, I think the first place everyone should start. If you've never read them before, is read the original Thrawn trilogy, Air the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. That takes place about five years after Return of the Jedi. For a lot of people that saw Return of the Jedi were wondering, had a bunch of questions. You know, what's Luke gonna do? Are Han and Leia gonna be together? What happens to the Empire? It answers a lot of those questions that people were wanting in the aftermath of the original trilogy. So if you've never read it before, I'd start there. Um, if you like Sith kind of shit, um, I'd read the Darth Bane trilogy. It takes place about a thousand years before the movies. If you're really into military stuff or dogfighting, uh, shit like that, I'd read the Rogue Squadron books. Those don't have, well, it has a tiny bit of Jedi and Force stuff, but very, very minimal. Mostly, it's just about Rogue Squadron, about military stuff, about how they dealt with the military apparatus when just because the Emperor dies doesn't mean the Empire's gone. It's actually a really long battle that takes place out for decades between the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant. Um, so I'd recommend the Rogue Squadron series as well. I don't know. What was the, what was the one that you said there's like a fuck ton of Jedi... Uh, Jedi Adventures, no. Jedi Quest? Well, so, um, for kids. The Jedi Apprentice books. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Jedi Apprentice novels, that takes... I love those. Those, those came out like right along with Phantom Menace. And um, there's a lot of those books, but it basically follows Obi-Wan, like a 13-year-old Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon. Um, and how Obi-Wan became Qui-Gon's apprentice and a lot of the different journeys and missions and stuff that they go on. Those books are fucking awesome, dude. For what they were, for, you know little like hundred page you know i'm gonna order a few of them books. right now i want to order a few of them Hold on. Yeah, i've got the whole i've got the whole set in storage somewhere yeah jedi apprentice eh? is there a favorite that you have i've reread the first two books like a million times um so i would say those oh with are like it, my hold on is it with, with, with xanatos yes yes oh fuck okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. then oh sorry right, so I've, okay <laughs> Xanatos is uh, Qui-Gon's yeah. old apprentice who fell to the dark side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, these are fucking awesome. Yeah, they were really cool. Yeah. And you know what the best part about it is that Obi-Wan's not some... Because when you read those books, you're like, I'm going to find out about Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's not some fucking prodigy or like just super powerful. He almost essentially fails out of the Jedi Order. Yeah, he's, he's on shit. his last legs. Um, and he thinks he's basically done. Uh, and Qui-Gon refused to take him as apprentice because of the shit Qui-Gon had been through before. And like eventually, because the force just kind of keeps pushing them together, they realize that it's kind of like meant to be. And he ends up uh, becoming Qui-Gon's apprentice, which is awesome. I can't find the first one. It's a picture of fucking young Obi-Wan just holding a fucking lightsaber straight up as fucking. Uh, it's called Hold on. the rising force. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I think. Yeah, he's like levitating it. Mm -hmm. Damn. Used as hell. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to hunt for those in a bit. I uh, worked on Madam Webb as production assistant. 
sure you did. Oh, it was fun. Uh, Ryan, oh, what's that guy's think? name? Skyscanner black guy. Yeah. So when I was coming home from Miami, I was in the airport and I was live streaming and there was this guy who was like, he talked to me for like probably like 40 minutes in the airport. And he started talking about how Skyscanner has like the best prices and stuff. And he was really helpful. And then chat go, goes ahead and it, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was first Skyscanner guy. Then it was like Skyscanner guy's kid. And then it's like Skyscanner guy, but he's white or something like that. And then now it's Skyscanner black guy. But the guy was like Latino. So I don't know. <laughs> it's just different variations, I suppose. Please make my day and say Filoni Baloney. Baloney Baloney. For the love of God, hashtag cancel Disney Plus. Rewatching Rebels, there's a throwaway line in season two about Sabine being a Jedi. The Force theme also is spammed with her. I hate it, but it was set up. So there's a lot of people that have like gone back retroactively. They're like, oh, look at when she's training with Kanan. I don't know if that is the dark saber arc or not in season two. It would have been season three with the dark saber arc with her, right? Three. I think it's three. Yeah, I don't know. Now, send I, me I a DM. Send me a DM of what episode it is, and I'll, I'll look at it. Couldn't tell you too much. Theory, how's Vader two going? It's going great, man. Going great. Working on it every day. People all around the world. Ryan, how can a panel of people all just automatically bash X Men ninety seven? It was what is this X Men ninety seven? Are they redoing um, the the old X Men? So it's a continuation of the X Men cartoon from the nineties. Oh, cool! Um, that's how it is marketed, and um, you know, there some of the stuff that the writer that the showrunner said even a year or two ago made people a little hesitant because he's like, it's a really different world now than it was back then. You know, there we were dealing with things in that time. Now the world has changed and we're going to bring basically 2020s back into this 90s cartoon. When we hear stuff like that, people are going to be a little hesitant. Um, now we find out that Morph, who obviously, you know, if you're familiar with the series, Morph could morph into anybody. Yeah. Well, Morph now, even though going by he, him pronouns for the entirety of the, uh, 90s thing he's now non-binary um and there's some character design stuff in terms of listen they took away rogue's ass and titties that's what they did um so there's people that have problems with that overall like the trailer by itself i like not if i was just coming from an outside perspective and disney marvel hadn't fucked up a bunch of stuff and i didn't hear any of the stuff out there about the showrunner or the character descriptions and i just watched the trailer i'd be like Okay, like I'm kind of interested. I love when the fucking music hit. I love hearing that X Men theme. It's one of the coolest themes we have, like in comic book history. Yeah. Um, but overall, the trailer was fine to me. But there's a lot of stuff that people are rightly worried about. I think based on what we've seen over the past couple of years. But yeah. Kevin says, Ryan, how can a panel of people just automatically bash X Men '97? It was so epic to hear the theme and see the characters. Can we wait and see it then bash it? No one was hyped at all. Well, what I will say, I don't know which panel you're talking about. Uh, by the time we talked about the trailer on FNT, I had probably seen the trailer like five fucking times. Um, so that's part of it. But I mean, I was fairly okay about it when we reacted to it on Geeks and Gamers Daily. You know, you can go back and watch that stream. I think on that Thursday or Wednesday or whatever that was. But I understand why people, I'm not as attached to X Men 90 or the X Men cartoon as I am to a lot of other things. So I'm not going to be as up in arms about some of this shit because it just, I don't I have as much emotional attachment to it. But what some people you, really do. What would you say is your, like, number one fandom? Like your end-all, be-all? Star, Star Wars, 100% Star Wars. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. What about you? I have to think about that for a while. I'm trying to think of, like, what do I end up talking about the most? It probably is Star Wars, but... <sighs> oh, there's so many game franchises and then film franchises and then shows and... Ones that are still going, ones that are dormant that I still love talking about. How would you like define it? Do you mean like the thing that you think about the most? Uh, the thing that's most important to you. If they were to change something, you'd be like devastated. Oh, that's Buffy Roman the Vampire Empire. Slayer. If they touched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I'd probably kill somebody. I mean, I love Harry Potter. I love the Harry Potter franchise. I'm like deathly afraid, but also super hyped about this series that they're doing. 
um, because I think it's the, I think it's absolutely the right way to do those shows is like an eight to 10 hour series for each book. Thousand percent. It would fix so many problems the movies have, even though I like the movies, like I virtually, I, I like the movies. I don't hate any of the movies, even though Half Blood Prince is one of my favorite books. So it's a frustrating to see a poor adaptation of that. But anyway, that is absolutely the way to see them is in that type of episodic format but I'm deathly afraid of things they might change mm -hmm. about Harry Potter. You know? Well, maybe that helps illustrate the X-Men thing, right? Like if I heard anyone was making new Buffy, I'd be like, Oh fucking hell. And then someone would be like, why are you, why, what the hell? You haven't even seen it yet. And I'd be like, I'm for the same reason that I was hyped 20 years ago, whenever anything new for a franchise came out, because yeah. I assumed it would be good. Nowadays yeah. I assume it'll be bad. Right. And so, because X-Men's interesting. Some people are asking me for my opinion. I don't really have one. Like, I, I saw a couple of the episodes of the animated series back then, and I liked it. I wouldn't... That's something I wouldn't mind just watching, like, now even at some point. But the the idea of these new episodes... I saw the trailer, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm obviously familiar with the theme as well. And I was like, looks looks fine to me. And then, you know, like, I, yeah, sure. Give it... Wait for it to come out. Give it a chance. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it or not. I might just to make sure I, you know, can keep up with people talking about it. Um... But I, I just, uh, I guess my passion isn't quite there. So I don't really have much to say, if you know what I mean. The, the thing is, I, I I think people have earned so much bad will over the past five years that for anyone to automatically say, well, they deserve the benefit of the doubt. I think fans have just been so royally fucked that I, I don't think that that's realistic. You know, if there's, if there's some people or creators or whatever that have earned your goodwill, that's an individual case by case yeah. basis, and that's fine, you know. Um, but for the a lot of fans out there, they feel like they've been screwed. They feel like everything that they cared about is being bastardized and used. That their nostalgia is being taken advantage of. The reality is, if you wanted to make an X Men series and you wanted to make it about modern day, whatever, blah blah blah, um, you wanted to have all the non binary characters you wanted in the world, man, go create. X-Men 2024, the new whatever. But that's not what they're doing. They're making an like an extension, essentially a sequel to the 90s cartoon that's supposed to be set in 97. You know, that's not the place that like that's the place to replicate what so many people loved from the 90s to continue that on, not to change the way you're supposed to tell that story. Theory Bad Batch Season 3 is on 221, not 220. Maybe it comes out tomorrow night at like 8 or something. Mm. Yeah, it comes out tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. and 59 seconds, plus one second. All right. See what I mean? Can't wait. Yeah. yeah. Which characters would you like to see return? Mine would be Barris, Commander Cody, or Slick. Would be nice to see how they'd evolve uh for me i want to see quinlan voss return fundamental answer is bring back nobody like if we're talking broad as opposed to specifically bad batch or whatever uh because i just don't trust how they're going to deal with stuff however like the legitimate answer just because it would am amuse me is to force them to bring back and give stories to people like jar jar binks i just want to see what disney would do uh some like joke characters you know because it would just be funny Bro, I still remember the first rumors about the Obi Wan Kenobi series where he finds like a bearded Jar Jar, mm -hmm. like old man well, Jar Jar. You know, on the top, like if I was to take it seriously and, and the guarantee was to be handled well, so who do you want to see return? Can I pick? Do I have to pick people who've like left slash assumed dead, or can I just pick anything? Anything. If it was anything, it probably I'd be aiming for like Count Dooku. Uh, he's one of the people I'm most interested in seeing like new and more content for. I think you'd enjoy Tales of the Jedi. I really do. I do think I, I think he would too, and he wouldn't probably have some of the same complaints I do about it. I don't think so. No, I think yeah. those three episodes, man. You, I think you'd get a kick out of them. Ten minutes each. I want my Dooku political thriller and my Dooku doing the whole getting Django in place for the. The cloning. Oh, that'd be oh so you, you so you want Django Fett bounty hunter game adapted? That and yeah, because I feel that just that's a TV show right there. Just give me and then easy. But again, this is my brain. Every time is like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, I know it's, it would be shit because they would fuck it up. <laughs> but what if yeah. it's not? What if it's what if it's that done? would be wonderful theory. Yeah. I would love it. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh 
Should someone make a fan film of all the director's cuts or novelizations of the prequel films? Make it in animation 10 plus hours of peak Star Wars. Only thing is Disney would have a temper tantrum. Make a fan film of all the director's cuts or novelizations of the prequel films. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that'd be cool. Like all Someone the said, what, do you think books? Dooku's storyline is a masterpiece? Like, it doesn't exist. That's my whole issue. I want it to exist, his whole story. Yeah. There's there's a lot more background in, you know, in, in a lot of EU stuff and even in the Plagueis novel and you start to see the like how he was able to be manipulated and everything into doing what he did. It's interesting. What did is the uh God, what's the book Dark Rendezvous? Did you, uh it's a it's a Clone Wars era novel, but it, it involves it's one of the only books where we get a lot of insight into Yoda and Dooku. And God, it felt in that book, it felt like Dooku was damn close to turning back. Um, damn, I, I got to read that one. I was going to say that's yeah. another aspect I'd love to see played with. It's, and I would have loved to have seen Christopher Lee doing it as well. But obviously, it's oh, asking too much at this point. Yeah, but dude, like, it's cr absolutely insane what this, this technology now can do. You could literally bring anyone, but like what they did with Tarkin. And and then with the voices, like you just AI voice at this point, it's just it's you know it, incredible. Um, I'm not as in favor of that shit uh, it, until they nail it, and until we get like through any ethical quandaries, I I'd rather not. Like the the Luke Skinwalker stuff was throwing me off completely. Well, that's that's old tech. I think the new tech that they're doing, like they got now, is absolutely amazing. Like what they did, which what Shamook was doing, we got hired for with the deep fake stuff. I don't mind if we get the right cast, a recast. I don't mind at all. Okay. Who do you problem think? Is it, it, problem is, it can't be like Book of Boba Fett, where yeah, you know, every every shot of of we actually get of his face, he's like standing still, or whatever, because of that tech, and like so you're limited yeah. in what you can do. Yeah. Um, I overall am a fan of just recasting. That's what I'm a fan of. Um, I I think it's perfectly fine. I think there's a reason be like, hey, like the guy who plays Luke in Book of Boba Fett, who was like the guy before they did, he looks so much like Luke fucking Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now might not sound anything like him, I don't know, but like I feel like you could do it. And to me, even the yeah. way he specifically looks isn't as important as the vibe he gives off. Like, yeah. well, I could have I could have been okay with Alden Ehrenreich as someone who doesn't look a ton like Harrison Ford to me if his vibe had been better. But it's it's also it's just tough because when you look at Lando and you look at whoever his nuts is, it felt like he was doing a Lando impression the entire time. Yeah, right. Which yeah, also yeah. feels off. Yeah. So it, it's a very demanding thing. It's a very difficult thing. Um, I know. I but I think that, that I think that recasting is the right way to do it. Okay. If we um get behind it, if this insane crazy idea where they actually got you and and. Uh... Uh, Hayden to do a live action Clone Wars with stuff that maybe hasn't been done yet, as in storylines haven't been explored yet. But I'm still in favor of the whole live action version of animated stories. I'm fine with that too. But if we had, and they were like, who are we going to have as Dooku? We got to have him in there. And it's like, well, feel like Charles Dance might be able to pull it off. Oh, um, yeah. And the thing about it is, if someone was to say, no, he doesn't sound enough like Lee or he doesn't, he wouldn't have the same presence. It's like, I think that's okay though. Because I think he would do a oh, really, wow. really good job. Yeah, I think he would too. Oh, you're right. And I think that we would be like, I love, I love Christopher Lee and Charles Dance's Dooku in the same vein that I, I think a lot of people like the animated Dooku, right? The guy who does the voice for him. Oh, he's a great actor, this guy. And um, yeah, I don't know. Because if someone said like, well, we'll use Dance and we'll CG Lee's face on him, so I'd be like, no, don't do that. Yeah. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we can, we can just be what it is. And, and again, as Ryan was saying, like I wouldn't want discount um, Lee or discount Tywin. I would want them to really give him strong writing and let him really play the character. I right? get into it, that sort of thing. Yeah. What's up, Wolfsbane? Hey, fellas, in the context of Legends, prequels, and before the Clone Wars, who is your favorite prequel villain? I think mine's Dooku, with Grievous being a close second. Uh, yeah, Maul. I think Dooku is the most interesting, but I think Maul is probably my favorite villain I, lo I love the idea that dooku you know split from the jedi and the republic because he felt like they actually were 
oppressive or inefficient or whatever combined with his interest in the in the dark side i feel like there's just so much to explore there yeah. dooku is the most interesting because he, there's well one he is human right but he has the human element to him is like we can kind of understand where he's coming from a little bit whereas maul literally just a killing machine no real motivations from what we saw in phantom menace um and then grievous i wish we had got more of grievous um so you can see like this is a this is a fucking guy who has been a warrior his entire life who literally the way he ended up in the form he was was engineered just to turn him into someone who hated people so they could use him and uh I think that Grievous had way more potential than we actually saw on screen. I think all three of them do. I'd love to see more of. Well, I, I'm about to say I'd love to see more of Maul, but it's like, oh, you can. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I guess I meant you're, you're going potential. to see more. You're going to see more of Maul. I will. Uh, what I, I guess I meant was that we could have had a lot more of all three of them in the three movies. Uh, I feel like to, they could have been better served. To, to me, they they all served exactly what their purpose was, which was to present prevent different sides of um the person who would eventually become darth vader i that's get that really, that's really what i feel all of those characters really intended on being the raw rage and fucking anger and martial you know fucking channeling in a martial way of darth maul the fallen jedi distrustful of the jedi order from dooku and then of course the cyborg fucking machine that he ends up becoming this hybrid of you know real human parts and fucking machine and i think that that's really what it was intended in my mind and i think it all even though we could have used it would be cool to see more of this or more of that i think it did exactly what it was supposed to do i feel like that is something that a lot of people don't even realize is going on yeah i agree which I is like a backstory would be dope I just, I just give, give them more all three of them this room we can remove some room. of the yeah but they don't do it i don't fucking hell i do not know why uh, i don't know who this is Oh, uh, hey, well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that, maybe that will happen. Who knows? Maybe that's, maybe it's planned to happen already. Could be, maybe. I heard a rumor. <laughs> older Omega clone? What do you mean, older Omega clone? <laughs> maybe it's like a Jerry there. Seinfeld joke. Django. What's the deal with older Omega clone? Django, yeah. At this point, certainly in canon, as far as I'm concerned, Django's cooler than Boba. I mean, Dirge is pretty dope. But you know, Dirge, Dirge is cool. Um, Django's fun. Well, if you've listened, there's a difference between people like there's two different types of people in the world people who have played Bounty Hunter and people who have not played Bounty Hunter. Okay, mm -hmm. for people that have played the Bounty Hunter game, you know that Django Fett's fucking awesome. Yeah, regardless of what you saw on screen, <laughs> you could say the same for Boba, probably, regardless of him falling into the Solic pit. He's pretty cool. Okay. Because I mean, Web was you, you read this? I'm gonna go peek. Ryan, Madam Web. So you misspelled it. Respect, Madam Web. It's a yeah. there's an E on the end, and there's only one B. All right, Madam Webub wasn't just bad. It's bad, bad, like Halle Berry's Catwoman and Dragon Ball Evolution and Last Airbender. It was a discount shell of its namesake, and for what it wasn't, fool's gold and a pipe dream. Yeah, I think me and Mahler were talking about this. A little bit man this is just a good old-fashioned dog shit movie like it's just yeah. a bad movie in like almost every conceivable way it's bad whether it's the writing whether it's the dialogue whether it's the editing whether it's the cinematography whether it's the sound mix whether it's the adr and at the end of the day the story they're telling there's not well. too much redeemable about madam webb I don't know anything about Sydney Sweeney outside of the two main reasons people know it and uh, the acting from her in that movie. I was like, I hope she's better at the other stuff because that was horrendous. <laughs> I hope everyone was better at anything. Fair, else. Everybody seems better yeah. than what they are in that movie. The guy who plays Ezekiel feels like every mm -hmm. one of his lines is an ADR nightmare. I think I think that that movie, I think Dakota Johnson came out and said something five days ago that she's like so much changed about the movie since the time I signed on and I'm not allowed to talk about any of it. Um, I would really love to hear all the shit. I think a lot of the people involved in it are pissed because of how bad it is and the way it's just a <laughs> laughing stock. Um, there are quotes from the directors and the writers being like, 
this film, we captured what we were looking for, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I wonder. I wonder if they're being honest. I don't know. Or if I wonder if uh, if they legit... Because the guy who fucking wrote this wrote all those other movies that are like Morbius, horrendous. Gods of Egypt. Yeah, and you think, like, how many movies do you have to be a part of that you write before you can say, like, okay, that's just a shit writer? Yeah. I that's actually the, the thing that's been brought up with the Chris Stuckman stuff. And there was a, a an account that basically said... You guys don't understand how the industry works so much that you should know that you can't even write a bad film without being a good writer. As in, like, to get in the door, you'd have to be a good writer, which that was Joe buy. Russo, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, I don't buy not, that at not all. Not Joe Russo from Marvel, the other Joe Russo, who's like a horror director or something. Uh -huh. um, which one is it? Like, he's invested in fucking saying that, that is true. But, like, the idea that there are no bad writers in Hollywood, they're all good. I just be like, okay. Or at least, mm -hmm. you know. It's like, what have we, what have we witnessed? Uh, the past couple of years, like, dude, we had those fucking those videos for like Game of Thrones where they're like, "Oh yeah, Danny forgot about the Iron Fleet." It's like, so you're just a shit writer. Like that's all it is at that point. You go blame the studio for that one. Frieza arc for me. Frieza and Cell. You guys watch Dragon Ball? Nope. Ryan. I don't. I have no fucking idea. I'm hurt. Sure. I've heard that I'm like one of the guys there because I'm just angry at everything. But I don't know. What's crazy is that me and Ryan don't like anything in Star Wars. Uh, listen, that, that's, that's what, what people say. think. The people are like, oh, do they like anything? It's like it, they're they're like not very intelligent. Like, oh, they hate Star Wars. It's like yeah, you know, I, I probably like more Star Wars than most people know exists. Like that's um, the crazy thing. I guess part of the funny thing for me is my brand, my name is is built on Darth Maul. Like that's where it comes from. So I'm just sitting here awkwardly, like, yeah, I hate it, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's so uh, bad. Yeah. I, I really wish that I could have seen people's reactions in a theater when Darth Maul showed up at the end of Solo. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> like, that's like, so funny. Like for people to just be like. Where did he come from? Like, what's he doing here? <laughs> and and they literally needed to fucking show him igniting the lightsaber just so people knew it actually is. Like, oh, Maul. this is a Sith. Oh, okay, cool. Just to turn it back off. It's just like, yep. <laughs> just so you know, I'm serious, Kira. Uh, hopefully, we get the continuation of that story someday. Maybe in a TV show. Bring back Amelia Clark. Dude, she must hate being brought it. in I, at the tail end of franchises dying over and over again. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if she was brought into Game of Thrones, but... Oh, well, I wasn't um, really referencing that, because Game of Thrones is what gave her access to Terminator, uh, Marvel. Terminator, Marvel, uh, Star, Wars. Star Wars, yeah. It's All three just absolute fucking failures. To the point and, where I don't even know if they'll a, remember she was in the MCU. Like, I don't know if they will. The creators will remember her. So just to put it in perspective for people who haven't watched Secret Invasion, like Theory probably, um, her character's literally the most powerful person in the universe. Yep. <laughs> she has the powers of every superhero and supervillain that exists yep. in the MCU. And when you start, you like, you probably are thinking of something more reasonable than what it is. Are we talking about Rogue? No. <laughs> We're talking about um, God. What's her name? Uh, Gaia. 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 The scroll. The theory. There is a character that gets given the DNA of everyone who bled on the battlefield in Endgame. Which, uh, if you look at the listing, is basically just everybody from Groot to Thanos to fucking Drax. Everyone's DNA, and they put it into her so that she has all of their attributes, including like strength and powers. What? Everything. She there's there's basically no power she doesn't have. She is it's all the Jedi. Yes, she is all the heroes. Well, it's just a new I, character. I think, well, I think Gaia exists in the comic books. I, I don't think she. I, I don't. I don't think she's like this though. Probably not. But this is a character and, that got introduced in Secret Invasion as the daughter of Talos. That's his name, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. This is in the prequel to the Marvels, which is very and, important. Like I said, I'm really curious if they'll even bring it back, Amelia Clark's Gaia. Because the thing is, now they got to be careful who they're even making shit about. Have any of you played Hell Divers Two shows? Live service games can be good. I have not seen this. Uh, I've heard a lot of people it. talking about it, but I haven't played it. Yeah, I haven't. 
Theory is a delusional optimist because his channel depends on it. Also, Dave Filoni is an effeminate weasel. That is all. <laughs> weasel. Damn. I still nice. can't get over that picture of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny. I don't like it. It's almost as funny as this guy's delusional comment. I hate my, that. My I... channel depends on my takes on Star Wars, so it could be one way or the other. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, wishing you the best. Thanks, dude. Wishing you the best, too. If instead of Maul returning in Clone Wars, his character was replaced by Savage, would it still have, would it still be bad? Uh, well, I, I mean, yeah, I'm. I don't know if you guys are different, but I Maul should be dead after what happens in Phantom Menace. He should be gone. If you if you have a brother of Maul that wants revenge and stuff, and you pick up a lot of the storylines that Maul would have had, I think that can work. I I think that I I agree with that statement. It wouldn't have been as bad. Like to me, one of the problems with Savage is how quickly he gets like how quickly he gets turned into this you know super force user and how quickly he gets trained and everything i feel like if you had extended that out over like a season or something you know where you're getting hints of it and you're showing the progressions i think that could have been done better hmm. but rather than slammed into a couple episode arc like i feel like it kind of was it was a little bit rushed but i mean i think you can get away with that in animation well, the problem is, the the problem is things that we give a pass on in animation. We talked about a little bit earlier. Mm. That has ramifications. Guess what? People can give a pass to what happened with Darth Maul because of its in animation. But then that gets its that gets used as an excuse as to why all these other Force users can die of a lightsaber wound in the gut but in live action. I'll you know? argue that's only given a pass by people who don't understand Star Wars, Joby Harold, or whoever else. For writing these ridiculous scenarios. I doubt George would have gone in there and written Reva as surviving a freaking lightsaber wound when she was a youngling from Anakin. Hell no. You're like, what the fuck is this? You know, Maybe he just happened to hit her Reva. in the same spot again, and that's why she survived. It was already like dead cells. Yeah. Avoided the major arteries. She'll probably live. Yeah, maybe. Most likely. Yeah, right in the heart or the lungs or whatever. <laughs> Ahsoka would have been better animated. Ashley Eckstein, Luke, Leia Han, Conversations Plus, no deep fakes. Ahsoka, Vader should have discussed redemption. Well, I mean, Ahsoka and Luke, I think we've all been waiting for that. <laughs> well, we are like... <laughs> <laughs> Carry on waiting. The problem is, it's... They missed their opportunity. Yeah, yeah. it would be... It, it, they could do so it now. Stupid. They could have that conversation, but we're all going to be saying, like, it's fucking weird that we've heard this, all this information now. They would have talked this out ages ago. Yeah. Or yeah. they don't, which is more likely. I know. Well, maybe they'll show the... Ah, fuck, who knows, man. Uh, all things said, even the characters they create have potential and still end up being screwed up with indecisive writing and retcons. That's unfortunate. I'm inclined to agree with that, yeah. Like Finn, right? They created him, and everyone was like, ooh, and then they went... And you're like, oh. Yeah. Nobody can match Ahsoka besides Luke. The Sith Lords died. Thrawn isn't that big of a threat without a Force user. Yeah, he needs one. But Thrawn... The problem is he it, should be a threat without a Force user. There's that, but then there's also... They will make... Say, for example, she's in a room with Thrawn, and she could easily stop him with a Force. She just won't be able to if Dave wants that that way. There'll be something that gets in the way. You'll, you'll do a thing. He'll run away. He'll... <laughs> <laughs> fucking what's her name uh morgan elsbeth but a fart ghost she'll appear and she'll have to fight her it'll just always be something until dave is like yeah thrawn's boring we can get rid of him now didn't he say that there was a quote where he said like play with thrawn for a few years yes oh god i hate that attitude. they're literally treated as fucking keys you jangle in front of a baby like that's mm. that's how that's how he sees it that's how he sees it like that it's pretty clear well, from that because he has to die i guess no. <laughs> what the fuck? Why are you saying about Thrawn? No other fucking character you say that about. Well, because of the sequels. What, what are they going to do? Put Dave him in Filoni Pridia? literally said that Dave Filoni, or that Ahsoka is not dead in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> he came yeah, out Ahsoka's already fucked all of that concept up. Oh, I thought she he said, be... I don't know. Oh, remember, like, in the, immediately in the aftermath of Rise of Skywalker, when you hear Ashley Eckstein's voice with all the dead Jedi, Yeah, Dave Filoni... Put out a picture of Ahsoka and Gandalf, and it was like <laughs> he literally drew a picture of Ahsoka and Gandalf in with her fucking Gandalf robe, and and Gandalf <laughs> is like saying, you know, some people thought I was dead too. <sighs> oh, you don't remember that? Dave Floyd yeah, doesn't tweet very much. I'll pull it up. That was in 29 December of 2019. 
after the premiere of Rise of Skywalker and people heard her voice. They're like, wow, that means Ahsoka's dead now. Oh. Oh, God, oh yeah, he was probably good. pissed that JJ would go ahead and do that. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm the only one who's not allowed to kill her. <laughs> Pretty much. The thing is, as continuity goes, the fact that she heard Ahsoka's voice, they can just always change that into, yeah, she heard it because she's part of the Force. Doesn't have to be dead. Yeah. Maybe she's walking in the world between worlds and she sees Rain. She's yeah. like, who's the Force? That's Maybe what I mean. she's on Peridia. Compare that to bringing back, you know, Darth Maul or the Emperor or whoever else. Like, that's not, that's the tiniest of continuity, like, confusions that they would absolutely do. You yeah. can do it. <laughs> it. Here's the tweet I found it. Um, was thinking of all of you this fine morning. Happy holidays on Christmas. Mm. It's Gandalf and Ahsoka. People thought I was dead too. Look how that turned down. Dot, dot, dot. Again, right after the release of Rise of It's Star. genuinely like this shit. Th this is the stuff I always advocate completely against when it comes to writing. It's like, oh, I love that Lord of the Rings stuff where he like dies and then he comes back and he's white. Let's do that. And then they just do that. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you know why it's meaningful in Lord of the Rings? And you'd be like, yeah, because you like him. And now he's back and you like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had nothing to do but sigh about this. So sad. Happy holidays from Dave. Well, let's just don't kill them. He signed his tweet. Simple as that. Don't no, but them. then he can't do Ahsoka the White. You have to kill her. Well, he, he he could just have him power up. She can just find a white cloak. Isn't that Dragon Ball Z? Literally. I don't know anything about it. But... You should. I think you'd like it. Uh, isn't there like a thousand episodes to catch up yep. on? Yep. Nobody can match Ahsoka besides Luke. The Sith Lords died. Thorn isn't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oops. My mistake. Dave's a catch 22. When he nails things, he feels the most like George Star Wars, in my opinion. When Dave misses, he misses big. It pisses me off. Mm -mm. Just have to say, love you guys, and I agree with you, theory on how Barris should have more made an appearance in this. Maybe she'll be in season two, bro. Maybe, baby. Like, lo looking past, like how I don't like what they did with her. Um, obviously, Barris and Ahsoka interacted a decent amount in Clone Wars. You know, to the point where if there's yeah. any anybody here that. Anybody left in the galaxy that would have like a tie or something to Ahsoka, Barris would be one of those people. Mm -hmm. But I, I just hate that they turned into fucking terrorists. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I want to see Eva Green play Satil Sean in the Ooh. old public. I know they showed her in crit cinematics, but I'd still like to see her live action. She went toe to toe with Malgus. Mm. Multiple times. Does Mauler know that Maul's race is the male for the Night Sisters? I uh, know the the species with the guys with the horns on the head, right? That, like, that got all that did get retconned into like Zabrax or just uh, male. It didn't used to be that way, but yeah. I mean, I, honestly, that kind of information is just like okay. Wait, this is the new canon? No, they like that was a big TCW retcon. Like all Night Sisters and shit got completely changed for that. Yo, Theory Mahler and Ryan, you know I had to pull up. I think I told you guys before I'm starting my commercial pilot training in April. I'm also the guy who asks about perfect sandwiches. What's popping? What's going on, Jared? Hey. Hope you do well with the training, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Godspeed. Fly good planes. Perfect sandwiches. Huh? All right. <laughs> Thoughts on the idea of Mace coming back? Absolutely hate it. Him dying by Vader and Palpatine was crucial because it signifies the Jedi Order's fall. Just uh, wait for my story, bro, and then you can decide. Obviously, Freddie Prince Jr. wouldn't like it because that would mean that his math would be off. Like two <laughs> plus two equals whatever. Bound. Yeah, I, I think the that's one of the ones that you really there's a lot of potential to wait, make it work. That I think if you do a really good job, people will absolutely forgive the fact that like you let him survive that scenario. But with what we understand about the power of a Jedi, like it's not it's not further outside of you know reason than a hell of a lot of the things that happen in Star Wars that he survives that. Yeah, like we we've seen we've seen people get their hands cut off and not be completely debilitated by it, right? Um, we've seen people fall off of buildings or whatever in Coruscant and be able to survive, like by latching themselves on a car, whatever. We've seen people get electrocuted. Yeah, so like there there's just like there's justification for 
him surviving, certainly. Although I do think, like, I think the intention was for him to be dead. Because then you have, like, you know, then you got to figure out, okay, if he survives, what the fuck is he up to? Yeah, and, yeah there's a lot and, of And how do you get him out of the story? How do you, because then what you have to do to get him out of the story is to kill him. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the question. Um, George would change his intentions here and there, though, across the course of Star Wars. It's not like it's 100%. crazy. Dooku versus Mace, who wins? Uh, I would have to say light side, Dooku, if he's in the light side. Uh, Maul versus Dooku. Uh, sadly, well, you know what? Maul did beat Dooku, and Dooku beat Maul, so it's, it's kind of tough to say, but I think Dooku would win. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. Dooku would win. Just limited references for me to be able to like decide something like this. It's just fun nerd yeah. thoughts though. Isn't it? TC, think, TCW shit is like so. Do you think Dooku beats Mace? Well, like going um, from movies alone, I always thought that the if, implication was that Mace was the best with the lightsaber and Yoda was the best with the force for the council. If he's in the light side, so he can't use the pod. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I actually think that'd be a fucking great matchup. Um, if we're talking about like. Attack of the Clones era, yeah. I'd I think say Dooku like would fuck him up. Oh, it's tough. Because, so for for Mahler that maybe doesn't understand what Vapod is, um, specifically, it's a it's a formal lightsaber combat that is you know use form seven lightsaber combat, but a specific form of it, which is called a variation called Vapod, which you're able to use. Like if you're facing someone who's a dark side user, you're able to channel their energy basically into your fighting style. And you're able to like almost feed off of that. And it's a super aggressive and it's very dangerous because it can easily lead to you using the dark side and shit like that. Um, but that is one of the reasons why Mace was able to, you know, obviously stick with Palpatine for that long. And of course, Palpatine also knew what he was doing by you know, letting Anakin get there as well to try to manipulate that entire scenario. So it's kind of a tough thing to say, well, we saw him take down Palpatine because Palpatine was also using that. Yeah. Yeah, he was toying with it. Which is why the novelization is so fucking awesome. Why doesn't the great Pharaoh Ryan buy Disney? Surely the great Pharaoh <laughs> bathes in gold. Um, uh, I don't have that much money. Once they reduce the core value of Star Wars down to like pound ninety nine, I think everyone will uh, decide to try and buy it up. Give him time. Fans keep asking for Mace is going to regret it. Oh, well, I mean, that's what we said for years over on EFAB about Thrawn, and all the people in our fan base who are desperately waiting for him are incredibly disappointed now. So, hmm. yeah, I would guess that the same for Disney Mace. That's probably what's going to happen. I love the grift. I want more, but I know I shouldn't. <laughs> if, there, if it were sandpaper, I'd want a <laughs> lower grade. <laughs> I'm not the Jedi I should be. I want more. And I know I shouldn't. Yeah, it's Gregory right there. What's up, unfunny German? Ist Vader weak-minded or schizophrenic? Uh, I, wouldn't even, I would say neither. He's probably just... Um... We call it conflicted. Mm, yeah. Slave to his emotions. I'm maybe a little confused. Yeah. I would love to see Darth Trey live action, but I don't want Disney to ruin the old Republic too. Stay away from all that shit, please. That's my my standard. It's like just fucking stop. I don't 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 give me a don't give a Revan trilogy. Don't let me don't let them fuck him up. Come on. Stay away from it. Move forward. Do your own shit. Yeah, Mahler, don't you dare release anything lower than forty minutes. I do scare people when I make something that's lower than six hours. How long does those take? A like year. half a year. Sometimes a year, yeah. What? <laughs> if you've never seen them, you'll understand if you watch them. It's all custom edited. Every like three seconds is a new visual from whatever I'm talking about. So it's all sources. So what if you had like, let's say a team of like 20 people and they could pump these out every week? Would you do um... I mean, I want to get to a point where I have a team who can, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, 
getting getting somewhere. Like the Moolah output, so the second channel is is higher than ever right now. Like it's almost a video every at least every two days. So mm-hmm. if that gets steady and consistent, then maybe I can start transferring it over to the main channel as well. Probably could. Yeah. If you add up all the videos I make in a year, it adds up to the amount of time like one Mauler video is. Where I get to explain in an hour why a flickering light shouldn't be flickering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Force Awakens part one. The part one or part two? Did you even get to that? I, I think that was gonna say, that's part one. I get, I get into the first scene or two in part one, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you guys have head cannons? For example, I don't consider NJO Vong Legends or Disney sequels canon. But if they ever change Plagueis, they die. <laughs> um, well, that's what I'm worried about, Ryan. That's, I'm worried about the Acolyte changing Plagueis or doing so. Because it's 50 years before The Phantom Menace. He's fucking there. Head well, canon... Is, is asking? Because like, I don't consider the sequels canon. Uh, and no, even no. if I said I, I like I, I can't try to. That's just something that I just I don't I never think about the sequels. Go oh yeah that happened. I'm like no 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 God no. no. Um I yeah. I don't do like I don't do head cannon or whatever. I, if we're talking about like theories or whatever, that's fine. But in terms of excluding this or that, canon is canon. Canon is what Di- Disney owns it right now. Whether I like it, that's basically what I say. Like just because so you didn't like one big series in the EU called the New Jedi Order, right? That's fine. I mean, there's books I don't like, but it's all part of the overall story. So, to me, p- people saying I don't consider it canon is just their way of saying they don't fucking like it. Um, I agree with that. Um, so. Because I would have a metric for what I consider official canon, and that's defined basically by rights ownership and stuff. Yeah, I get that. But And I can disagree I... with it, and I can hate what they're doing with it, but... To, you know, well, what I'm getting at is like when I think of Luke Skywalker as a character, I just like you know, TLJ is not what he did. That's that's not some stuff that he did. So it's just like nah, you know. But if they said, well, so you're defying the canon as legally speaking, I'd be like, no, I get that. That's how that works. I know. Yeah. So that that for me, when people say head canon, it's just shit that they say they like and don't like. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. George Lucas actually mentioned that he probably did survive in one of his. In- he said it as like a joke because Sam was like, hey, Jedi can fall from high distances, so I, I live, right? He's like, yeah, I'm fine with you surviving. He doesn't yeah, shit. yeah he time. was just like saying it lighthearted and kind of the same way, <laughs> George, kind of the same way they invented Obi-Wan's home planet. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stu John. In an interview with Jon Stewart when he said, oh, yeah, he's uh, from the planet Stu John. Yeah. It's like, well, fuck, there's Wikipedia entry now. Cool, yeah. Mahler's brain broke when Star Wars Theory suggests releasing one of his videos once a week. I'm dying. More vids, long man. Also, watch it be. It just... I wouldn't be done with the first draft of a script in a week. I'd be like, I need more time. You've got too many so, streams. <laughs> when will we see the return of Jedediah and the Sheriff again? Is he still on the run to the Sheriff Cat? I don't know where he's at right now, man. You know, he's He might make a return someday, but you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Theory on Gardic Phone when? What's what's that? That is an amazing game where you have to write a prompt. So, for example, I write down, the man went to the shop to buy some cheese, and then you provided that prompt. We all, in a big circle, get provided everyone's you know turnover. So I have to draw an image that best represents your prompt, and then the next person has to guess the prompt from the image I drew, and then we compare to see how everything turned out and the pictures and the prompts get sillier and sillier so just, it's it just up. like Pictionary kind of it's it's honestly like telephone plus Pictionary it's like a it was a really cool idea and yeah we need to do more streams of them but yeah I would fucking have both of you on that if you want to play it, it sounds sounds like yeah, fun. I'm down can I draw yeah. bat cheese you can draw penises how crazy oh, is that yeah cool. yeah Go definitely ahead. so yeah nothing's off the table at that point of course I've seen the Mission Impossible series it's amazing Great. Ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, you know, Ryan. I was like, "What do I say about this?" Hmm. But I, I, you... overall, I love the Mission Impossible franchise. I think that one and two are like the two most different movies you could possibly imagine. Yeah. Um, and then three, they really, even though it's a JJ Abrams movie, I enjoy three a lot, and I think it set the template for what Mission Impossible <laughs> would be after that. And uh, I think that Ghost Protocol is amazing. I think Rogue Nation's really fucking good. Yeah. Um, Fallout, I really liked as well. 
um dead reckoning i don't hate it as much as mauler mauler fucking hates that one i do hate um, it. i considered a step down from the previous three but i still think it's good and i'm really looking forward to eight i love fallout i think it's fantastic it's practically transcends the limitation of being a mission impossible film almost like some of the stuff they do in that is not in any of the other mission impossible films to the point where i was just like damn they really fucking pulled out all stops and then it's I, sequel my biggest problem with that like is that they that, that the reveal of henry cavill like him being an antagonist was way too early in that movie for me i don't think so and i quite like they give you all the clues to pick it up well before they reveal it too in ways that i thought were quite fun like the phone being cracked and stuff Um, yeah i I just feel like they give you the reveal like 45 minutes in the fucking movie and it's like two hours and 45 i don't know i like that it gives henry cavill time to be a villain instead of pretending to be a hero oh shit i didn't watch that one oh well he just well (laughs) well, Well, i mean i saw them fighting so i figured he's a villain they're actually not they're fighting each other in that scene. If you're talking about the bathroom scene, unless he's talking about the oh, yeah, the bathroom oh, scene. They're actually the fucking together. when he like reloads his fucking biceps, basically. One of the yeah, best yeah, yeah. moments in action history. Yeah, and that was just like an off the cuff thing that they, um, yeah, the behind the scenes from that are awesome. I love yeah. Henry Cavill, dude. I love Henry Cavill talking about that was really cool because he wanted to do the parachute sequence, and. uh he was like trying to convince Tom Cruise to let him do it. And Tom Cruise is because Tom Cruise does fucking everything, right? And Tom Cruise is like, yeah. we've been training to do this for fucking months and months and months. We've been setting this up forever. If I let you do this, you will fuck it up. <laughs> like basically. <laughs> and Henry Cavill's like, okay, I guess I won't do it. You know, we do one take where I do it. <laughs> and then you do it with the other guy. Yeah. What did he want to do? It's There's a big a, stunt. Uh, dude, you should check it out. Fallout is, the... I think, the best Mission Impossible film. So you might like it quite a bit. What did I, I swear I just watched it, man. I like Ghost it, Protocol. Um, it, it wasn't. I think one. it was Ghost Protocol. I watched with Ghost Protocol. Train. He has lo- a little bit longer hair. It's with um, the train, right? Well, there's a couple trains in Mission. Well, is it the one where he takes the? He's on his motorcycle. He goes up the cliff and he freaking that's jumps dead off. Dead reckoning. The, that's, that's dead reckoning. One. That's the one that was just in theaters. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's seven. Oh. It is funny that you say the one with the trade, and I was like, shit, that's like four that's of them. Like all of them. <laughs> yeah, they, but like very specifically in this one, they try to give you like some reminders and the callbacks to like the first one. Um, yeah. But yeah, the I like Jeremy Renner in them too. In Ghost Protocols, I think the one where he climbs the freaking... The thing with the, oh my gosh, yeah, I love that Yeah, one. I like that. I love that whole setup of the different rooms they have people in. Ugh. That's the thing, which man. One, which um, one I haven't seen? Fallout. Fallout, the With sixth Henry? one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I actually found like the Burj Khalifa climbing. I found that way more interesting than the uh, the bike jump in uh, Dead Reckoning. Bike jump's just insane. Like the scale of it and everything. Uh, in terms of complexity, not in. Yeah. Is it Rogue Protocol where he hangs on to the ed- or sorry Rogue Nation where it hangs on to the edge of yeah. the the plane and they they do that like eight times they do that shot eight times he's hanging on the edge of that thing as it takes off my gosh yeah that's good he's shit. a fucking madman he's cool want to get into reading star wars books what would you guys recommend didn't we read this we read uh so. we may have read that one yeah we answered earlier though new star wars tv series and films should be non-jedi and sith focused let's see more just bounty hunting stuff or star wars reach rancher series Tulsa King, yeah, the best. Mr. In Between, like opinions, new characters. Well, to go uh, back to something Theory said a few of these streams ago, if it's great, we'll literally take any of this. Mm-hmm. Anything. If it's great. But if it's shit, you know, making it about a Star Wars ranch is not gonna save anything. Like No. <laughs> um I think that Do you mean Star Wars Rancher or do you mean Star Wars Reacher series? Oh, I thought they meant like a mean, guy on a ranch. Mean, <laughs> like I just like I just like that connected in my head now. It's like what would a Star Wars ranch be? Like, I mean, you know, just you fucking really get there. back in there and tell me what the moisture is. Dude, yeah, Clarkson's exactly. farm, but set in Star Wars. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Instead um, of sheep, I, it's like, you know, whatever animal. I I agree <laughs> in the sense that listen, I think the Mandalorian would have been a much better fucking series if Baby Yoda had never been in it. Agreed. A hundred, it would have been, I think that had the potential to be really fucking cool. An actual bounty hunter doing bounty hunter things, not babysitting this little fuck. And, uh, 
And then that ends up having to tie him into all these other super important things. Should just been a cool ass bounty hunter discovering more about himself and his fucking culture and working his way up the food chain and eventually like maybe uncovering some like black market shit or whatever was going on that has some bigger galactic scale. But for the most part, keep it just a dude doing bounty hunter shit. Fuck yeah, baby. It would have been great. I like the lot. Baby Yoda stuff. I just think that it limits him a little bit too much. Yeah, I think... Um, you know. What I was expecting from The Mandalorian as a series was what we got in the first, I don't know, 40 minutes of episode one. Yeah, and what we got in episode five of Book of Boba Fett. Remember that where he turns up to like a bunch of people, kills them all, and gets the bounty, goes to like the place. There's an interesting the first you know, 15 mi- the first 10 yeah. minutes of that where he's like using the dark saber and like cuts himself, and then you find out he's actually talking to his buddies and he's got to get trained this, in the dark saber, all that bullshit. That was such a fucking wild experience being like next episode of Book of Boba Fett, and it's like here's an almost ideal episode of Mandalorian. It's like what the fuck's going on? Do do so weird. But um, yeah, I would have way preferred a whole season of that. And, you know, just build up some regulars, people he gets upgrades from that he revisits that aren't. Sorry, but I don't really like the mechanic lady. I find her kind of great at this point. She's Peli Mata or whatever. She's fucking awful, dude. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but, you know, he's she, right instead. Oh, come on. Like, no one can like her, right? I have a feeling like a lot of people in chat would be like, why you hate her too, Ryan? Misog- misogynism. misogynism. Misogyny. I, I, I can't. Don't... Every time we get a it's freaking Tatooine joke, episode right? and her fucking hair shows up, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I need your help. I'm reading new... Is reading new Jedi Order books worth reading? I think there's 36 books. Yeah. There, there's not 36, but there's uh, the specific new Jedi Order series. I believe there's 19 books. Um, maybe 17 books and a couple like novellas in there. To me, it's worth it. To me, it feels like a point where... Uh, Star Wars got a little bit more mature in terms of, hey, it's not going to be a Saturday morning cartoon and the kids get kidnapped and everything is happy in the end. There's actually some real ramifications in cool. Jedi Order and it uh, sets a new template. So I think it's worth reading. If you're not a reader, I don't know. I think you should read them all, though. I don't think Maul's returning or Windu. The chemistry of this pod is almost real BBC levels. Well done, boys. Ooh. I guess we have Mauler to thank for that. I was about to say, I'm one of the hosts of that, so it feels weird to say. I guess the the comparison would be you two, are like As and Gary, who are very long time friends. So that's that's you know, it's a compliment. What's good, fellas? What's worse, the Last Jedi or the Rise of Skywalker? Uh... My heart says TLJ, but my mind says Rise of Skywalker. I mean, I think TLJ was shot better, more cinematic, but fuck TLJ. Rise of Skywalker is a worse movie. Um, probably one of the worst like movies, as like a movie like that that much money went into, and that yeah. big of a scale. Probably one of the worst movies that we've ever seen. But uh, the Last Jedi does infinitely more damage to Star Wars, and is the reason, in large part, why Rise of Skywalker was so fucking bad. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna go super pretentious. I think my heart says TLJ, mine says Rise of Skywalker, and my spirit says TFA, because. The spirit of Star Wars was annihilated with that film. Thank you, my brother. I agree. It looked good, though, Mahler. It's pro- TFA probably has the most things I could praise about any of the three films. The Ray's introduction is like not bad. Hmm. Introduction. Masters of Air is like a, uh, Masters of Air. I think is <laughs> a, a fighter pilot show or something. I've heard good things about it, but I don't really know. Your Star Wars Theory just wanted to say, I've been watching your channel for many years, and it's always been entertaining. Keep up the awesome work. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Orskis VR. See you tomorrow for the watch party. Hey, spam one if y'all are going to be here for the watch party tomorrow. We're going to probably start around like 10 or 11 p.m. uh, Pacific time. So it's going to be 1 or 2 a.m. Eastern. And that is official homework, right? It's got to be. Filoni quit Resistance after the first. Well, you just got to watch it for the week. No, I'm saying I, I like a, I, I'm just saying it's like a funny thing. Like that'll be that'll be show yeah. homework for yes. sure. Yes, yes. Filoni quit Resistance after the first episode. No. Produced the entire series, so I don't know. <laughs> what you mean. Like, 
<laughs> feel like he's connected, yeah. I wonder what the influence is. Has he ever talked about it in like interviews? Does anyone know anything about this show? I've seen clips of him talking about resistance, um, but I, I'm not too keyed in on it. So, is it over? Yeah, it, it, it was over years ago. It was like when did that air? Probably like 2017 ish. I don't even remember. Yeah, like he's he's got he's got creator credits. Yeah, he he, he cre like he was the creator of the series. Yeah, I don't know how we'd leave cool. after the first episode. I, like, I don't know what that means, but. He's got 38 writing now, credits. He, now, he was not like the. He was not as involved in terms of like the day to day creative level stuff like he was on something like TCW as much uh, like and resistance. I'll willingly admit that, but. The idea that he just yeah like like oh he, his name is just on it but he didn't do anything it's like okay he's got created by and so. developed by on like almost every episode surely yeah like he's gonna have he's connected to it more so than fucking people who don't have any credits attached to it uh but i mean whatever like people said this, this is the, the sticking point for me is that a lot of people say seem to agree that rebels sucks and that's something he had huge influence in there listen to do some rebels defense there is a there's a small but passionate group of people that really loved Rebels. Um, now, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of the reason that people are attached to Rebels isn't necessarily because of the characters that are created for Rebels, but a lot of it has to do with the tie-ins to TCW and the connection to Ahsoka, the connection to Maul, uh, the fight at the end of season two between Ahsoka and Vader, which we talked about, getting to see some of the clones, you know, again. Um, but, you know, I didn't. I don't particularly care for Rebels, but there are some people that really did enjoy it. But it's a small group of people. It's something that aired on Disney XD, so it didn't yeah. get a ton of eyes on it when it, you know, first came out. Mm -hmm. See all you all you fucking Rebels fans in chat that think I fucking hate everything. I just did some defense for your show. Oh, what a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Mahler. Where? was you when the rings of power trailer dropped i was at home i remember my reaction i opened my youtube trailer i opened my youtube saw the trailer no i think uh i think it was gary that was like pinging me immediately it's like it's it's out it's out it's out trailer's out and i was like oh fuck here we go <laughs> it dropped during the super bowl so i think we're all taking our eyes off the ball here there's a fetal there's feral. a feral chew fetal <laughs> fuck dude I'm getting tired. God running willy nilly, taking over streams. We must be vigilant. Never give up. Never surrender. Yeah, I gotta keep an eye <laughs> on that. Galaxy Quest, baby. What's a That's Chulu? A Looks like a Cthulhu. Uh, is Cthulhu? He, he, I think he misspelled <laughs> it. Yeah. Whatever. It's like a god, right? Yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah, big, massive bean. Ryan, what's your thoughts on the Yoda arc in season six? I think it's one of the the best things they've done in any show. Um, well, I, I love how it's like meaningless apparently because Qui Gon can now appear in like corporeal form, um, despite what he told Yoda in season six. I hate some of the stuff I hated about it was the Bane shit and how it's like again you're taking shit that exists that somebody else made and you're like changing it, but you're using that name like what they did with Bane in season six um so I, i'm torn because i like i like some of it and there's other things that just drive me up a fucking wall um season six is that's the one that was only that was the shortened one that got released afterwards right after the purchase so it was like only 10 episodes or something maybe 13 if i'm remembering right before we got season seven obviously years later yeah, Yoda goes through a, one of the only cool arcs, I guess, we get to see from Yoda. Um, like, in terms of his growth and his understanding of the Force and shit. It's kind of cool. No, he has not. The 1978 to 1988 Marvel Comics are my favorite books. Sing for me, the saga begins. Not for $2. 
Yeah. So there is a price. Mm. What's the price? You would probably set that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. What does he want us to sing? The saga begins. What that's that? the uh, that's the Weird Al Yankovic um, American Pie parody. Mm. Cool. You don't remember that one? No. I ain't gonna sing it for two dollars either. So, all right. I'm Hell, sure you. It's not even two dollars. It. It's like by the time we all take our cuts and then YouTube takes their cut, it's like <laughs> probably fucking twenty cents. It's the principle of the thing. Damn it. Yeah, fuck that. There's a good doc on Vice TV icons and Earth Star Wars Episode One to Six with interviews with Marsha Lucas about five hours long. Oh wow, really? I'd love to see that. Cool. Interested to see Mahler react to Pong Krell. Yeah, dude, me too. Well, we got to get through the 2D first, and then after a lot that, of we'll people, go yeah, that, that is a lot of what a lot of people will go to is one of the best arcs in TCW. Is that arc, specifically because of clones? Um, so I'll be interested to see how Mahler reacts to it as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the stream, Slice and Dice Brothers. All right, <laughs> Slice for <and> Toxatine. <laughs> Would you guys? like Lucasfilm to dive into the Old Republic age or into the origin of the Jedi and Sith? Old Republic. Uh, we're going to get an origin story with James Mangold, um, Dawn of the how Jedi. Do you, how do you think that's going to go? I think that um, it's, again, there's literally a fucking book and a comic series called Dawn of the fucking Jedi <laughs> that takes place in the same time frame they're doing it. They're literally like not even trying. Same with Filoni Tales of the Jedi shit. You can't even name your thing something else. You can't even change the logo to show what you're ripping off. Um, but I think it's going to be rough. It was not one of my favorite books. It's kind of a tough read, Dawn of the Jedi. Well, you guys covered Dune Part 2 when it comes out. It's not Star Wars, but it could be more interesting to talk about than Rebel Moon. I, I imagine can't it would be. wait for Dune Part 2. I have early tickets. I'm seeing it Sunday in IMAX. I can't wait. I hope it's great. I really like the first one. I don't really get hung up on the EU stuff. I mean, didn't George change up Bane in Clone Wars? He never thought of EU as full canon, so I didn't either. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Clone Wars is, sh is why Star Wars is so awful and why people like Theory are so complacent about the new stuff they're getting. Oh, is, is that the reason why? Okay. Um... Obi Wan today was always bad. Uh, yeah, Clone Wars is fucking awesome, dude. So I don't know what you're talking about. I think that, um, I think that some of the changes that they were willing to make and people try to explain away uh, in TCW did like cause damage, and I think it paved the way for some of the changes and retcons we see now to be hand waved away. And I think it has, in part, in part, led to what we're getting from Disney Star Wars, like that practice, you know? I mean, I when I watch it, I'll give my perspective on that. But yeah, I mean, I've heard, heard all kinds of things about Clone Wars. Well, like, I, I, I come at it from obviously a vast minority perspective in terms of but the amount of people that watched the Clone Wars, do you take... This is all Star Wars fans. People have watched movies. If you watch one movie, you're a Star Wars fan, whatever. The amount of people that watch the animated shit is like this big. Yeah. The amount of people that read all the EU shit is like this big. Like fucking nothing. Right? So th there are different levels and different scales. So I, I understand that like my perspective is not one of the majority. There's not, there's not going to be people that care mm -hmm. about as much shit as I do um, yeah. if they never experienced that. Mahler's going to go into this with a very interesting perspective because... He didn't give a shit about any of that stuff I give a shit about. And he's never seen any of this stuff. He's experienced this stuff. So well, I'm which now to see they've, what it is. They've gone and they've made this stuff even more diluted. And just like, you know, basically, oh, yeah, uh, baby Yoda, he's cute. That's the new fandom. Uh, yeah. New Derotic, by the way, he was a super ill uh, to the point oh. where he was like off camera on... Uh, Real BBC, you thought? Oh, right. uh, We've had a lot uh, of con crud going around everybody. Yeah, he's okay. He's years. just, you know, coughing a lot and sneezing a lot and stuff. So it's just, uh, yeah. 
But um, yeah, you know, sneezing. We'll have him on eventually. Sure. You can talk about Bad Batch. He likes that, right? Yeah, it's his favorite show. <laughs> Was What's he wheezing at all? Nerds? Needs to bit. change from politics, plot to plot politics. Need to change a lot of things. Uh, Top Shelf Nerds is the amazing marketing guy behind my sabers. He's doing all the photos and everything, so he's hard nice. making some really cool stuff for the the website coming in probably three weeks now. I think. What's up, dude? It's going room. What up, if room? Kenobi, in Kenobi, I'd rather old Jar Jar than young Leia. Me too. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Part ma part one. Joe Rama. As flawed a show as Bad Batch is, I thought The Outpost was a pretty good episode. The writing was decent, and Mayday's story was actually emotionally resonant, in my opinion. Shocking for Lucasfilm. Part 2. And thank you for that. I might just be biased because I love clone-centric stories. Would love Moobler's thoughts if he ever watches it. If I remember correctly, it works as a standalone. I will have to watch... Bad Batch, so I can keep up with these guys fawning over it. I'll be like, all right, wait a sec. Bad Batch Season 3 isn't a miracle that you guys think it is. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the more I spend time here, the more everyone's very obsessively looking for me to see the Clone Wars specifically, so it's probably going to happen. Yeah, you can take make a little review. Mahler, mm -hmm. because of your continuous high praise, I am starting Buffy soon. Isn't there a certain order I should watch it? And Angel, or go by release dates? Yeah, if you just Google uh, watch awesome. order Buffy, uh, I think it's the first result. It's a blogspot uh, website, jossweedon.blogspot.com, and it's someone who put together a listing that's pretty good. I think there's only one or two changes I would have made on it myself, but as it stands, it works really well. It um, lists Buffy and Angel next to each other, so it lets you know when to switch over, and it covers all of like the spoiler free way of telling you when to switch so that you get the continuity and it's really fun as for um if you started brand new fair warning buffy has a rocky start uh seasons one and two there's plenty in there that'll put you right off but that um by the time you hit so i know this sounds insane but there's an episode in season five that's considered like one of the greatest things that's ever happened to tv so if you if you feel like giving up I would say if you can get into season three and you still feel like it's just shit, then you probably should give up because season three is pretty good. But it might not be for you, you know. Uh, the answer is just work out and eat food. How would you start getting into Legends and how would you progress? I only, only know the cliff notes. Want to know more. Thanks for answering my questions. So... I would start again with the Thrawn trilogy, um, Air of the Empire, Dark Force Rising, The Last Command. The original Thrawn trilogy, not the new bullshit they put out after Disney bought it, just for the record. The ones that released in 91, 92, 93. Um, if you enjoy that and like it, I would actually go back to the Rogue Squadron novels that I talked about, and I would just start reading that in chronological order. If that's the shit you're interested in, post-Return of the Jedi, which most people are, you know yeah. what happened in the galaxy after the OT, that's what I would do. Um, and I would move on from Rogue Squadron to, well, Wraith Squadron might be mixed in there a little bit, but then uh, the Jedi Academy trilogy, which is important, a little bit rough to get through. A lot of people like it, but rough to get through for me, important. Um, and then I would just continue to move on past that and get into, uh, you know, New Jedi Order and on. One more Grievous under Dooku's tutelage. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, The Bounty Hunter game on PS2 is what got me into the Mandalorian culture in the EU. It was so cool that it became that it came with a comic book in the game menu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, which ironically is a comic book that they essentially ripped off Jango Fett's origin story for fucking Din Djarin, by the way. That's what they did. Shame. God. You know, Din Djarin's history with droids, you wouldn't even know that was a thing at season, by the time of season three. How so? Do you mean... Uh... In terms of, um, like, in terms of his parents getting killed and him being adopted by the Mandalorians, yeah. like, yeah. after that shit fucking happened, after the war came through. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Jango Fett, uh, God, what's it called? I forget the name of that. I know, comic. It's, it was one of the best ones, too. Jango Fett, uh...
what's the Django Fett comic book called? I'm pissed that I don't fucking remember it. Open seasons. Open seasons. Yeah, yeah seriously, that whole backstory for Din Djarin, where the fuck is it gone? We we have we haven't had, like worked with that for ages or benefited from knowing it. It's he got over he got over it. He got over it, yeah. And there was nothing else I guess they had to tell us about its history either. It's done. That was it. There was nothing interesting that happened in his like earlier years. He's, he's cool with it now. We need to meet Jack Black and Lizzo. That's what we need to spend our time doing. That'd be and cool I, if they made a backstory on Django. Like they uh made a show on it or something like that with Tor. Imagine I, they made a backstory for Din Djarin. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Star Wars game made like Hell Divers 2 would be perfection. Would love to see y'all do a Hell Divers 2 stream. Mm. We should do a gaming stream sometime. We've not showed Star Wars Theory the Drax arm. <laughs> What's this? But, all right. Answer another one. By the time you do, I'll have set it up for you. Okay. Uh, you guys should watch the video Rags is Pathetic, where he makes fun of Theory for crying. Rags is controversial and has lots of opinions that if you want to fight him on it, he'll happily do it with you. But just, just don't care. <laughs> Say what you want. Good day, fellas. Question for you all. Since Asajj died in the book, do you guys think she will die in Bad Batch? Uh... My gut feeling is that it's a complete retcon. Um, do you think and... so, eh? That, that's my gut feeling on it is that they're not really going to follow it like they've said they're going to follow it and they're just going to show like why she didn't actually die or something ah uh, fuck yeah but then that's my gut but i i don't know you know what the, it would be cool to see her in uh whatchamacallit ahsoka 2 electric boogaloo <laughs> um yeah i'm Strange. cool with dead people staying dead is the rule of three but i think Mahler will end up with it should we change the name of this from stargriff to rule of three I think we should change the name at some point. I don't know about rule of three, but. All right, let's change the name. What are we changing what's, it to? Uh, what's, what, what happened? Uh, do we not like Stargrift anymore? I don't know. Well, hey, I you know, like I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I feel like Stargrift implies we don't actually, we're not actually being serious about what we're saying. I thought that was the point, was that's, that it that's plays the, off that was the, the idea of, because we obviously are, but, you know. Yeah, I know. I think rule of three is kind of dope. Uh, what about, I don't know, chat, help us out. What do you think? Well, I mean, first question, chat, what do you think of Stargrift? Have we, have we changed true. on it? Yeah, if you, if you like it, if you like it, then you like it. I thought it was working, but I mean, if people don't, then it's fair enough. Oh, well, seems like they, some of them like it. Luke Soka thinks it's fine. Oh, did you? <laughs> so I I up <laughs> See, what Gregory's like, he actually tried to put in a trademark for it. So that's why he's upset. <laughs> so I want royalties, motherfuckers. Everybody likes Stargrift, I guess. Oh, cool. Nice. That's a good one. Lizzo's three boyfriends. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll keep it the same for a bit. I don't know. Whatever. Kind of wish Kathy Lucas was given all the opportunities Filoni is getting. She wrote many arcs for the Clone Wars, and I think she's very talented. She was bullied a lot online, though, and just left Lucasfilm. Why? I don't know about this. He, he means Katie Lucas, not Kathy. Um, oh, okay. And... I, I, it's funny. There's a there's a sequence I've watched a lot when they're actually describing like bringing Maul back and his legs and everything, and Dave's like going on about, well, we just thought it'd be really cool if we did this and if we had it look like that. And she like stops. She's like, well, I mean, I I hate to interrupt you, but we actually took all of this from the expanded universe. And Dave's like, well, yeah, I guess we did. That was one of my <laughs> favorite Katie Lucas clips <laughs> ever. Theory, if you could choose between George Lucas working on episode two or having the power to fire everyone bad at Lucasfilm, what'd you choose? Um, fire everyone bad at Lucasfilm. I got episode two handled, man. It's going to be great. But yeah, fire everyone bad at Lucasfilm. What if you also got to live with George Lucas for a year? Okay. But you had to clean up after him. Okay. <laughs> like, it'd be messy. But... I don't really like living with people. Unless it's like significant other than okay, but I don't know. Have to be a big house. Okay. I don't For know, the record, you? George, you could stay with me. I'm fine. I'll clean up after your ass. Fuck. Right. You ready? I got the thing. The 
and I'm going to give you a little context, right? But like we told you, she has everyone's powers yeah. in the MCU. But the weird thing is, when you're like, she's got, I don't know, Captain Marvel's powers, like, fine, so she can fly and shoot lasers, fine. It's like, okay, yeah, but what about Drax? Drax was on the list. Like, what powers does she have from Drax? Like, is she just generally strong? And they go a little yeah. further than that. She can have his arm at will. And also disintegrate her uh, clothes what? for it for some reason. What is this? What That's is actually this? what my arm looks like after watching Madam Web um, <laughs> in theaters. What is this, this is, dude? This is because she has Drax's out? DNA. This, this is recent, like, what, half a year ago or so? Right, Ryan? Like that? Um, yeah, summer of last year. So a little, yeah, eight months ago. Like, Secret Invasion. So this is this, Secret Invasion? Yeah, this got made fun of to hell and back. It was, so uh, she's got everyone's DNA. Yeah, and, and that Including makes sense so that she can. Yeah, she has a Hulk arm at some points. No, she doesn't. You're kidding. What is this? She, mean, has, she has ice giant powers as well. She has everything. She has the, the, every honestly, superpower, and from each hero and villain in the MCU, effectively, she has. The craziest thing is the. Do you remember Ebony Moore, uh, theory yes. from Infinity War? The guy who could. He had telekinesis. He's like a little alien looking guy. Um, he was the guy who fucks up strange. He's uh, Iron Man called him Squidward. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a guy who fucking you know basically kidnaps Doctor Strange and has all those little pointy things at him when they're in the fucking ship before I can't remember Iron Man and Spider Man save him. Well, I guess the funny thing is he oh. wears rings. Right? Are you, are you talking about fucking the the Maw? Ebony yes. Maw, yeah. Oh yeah, he, he was amazing. He was so cool. So, so she has his DNA, and that means that she can spawn his hand and his rings. And his penis, probably too. Probably, yeah. Throw it in. She can spawn it was everything. So weird how he died. He was so OP. He got I, sucked I, out of fucking spaceship. Yeah, that, That'll that do anybody it. in. Yeah. Pretty much. You're lucky you're not a fan of the MCU like we are. Okay. I'm a huge. <laughs> well, I, I was actually. I was a very huge fan, but with the Avengers. And once Endgame finished, I was <sighs> like, yeah, I lost interest completely. I didn't you mean like you don't Endgame. know who the Avengers are now. No, there's a new Avengers. Well, we all imagine we, we can only come up with guesses of who we think it is being led by Black Captain America, Captain Marvel, Shang Chi, Black Widow two. Oh, yeah. Oh yes. Okay. So <laughs> I watched Shang Chi. I watched um, the new Captain America show. I watched. Uh, fuck. There was something else I watched. You know what's crazy it, is it it's going to be five years since we saw Captain America last. It didn't stick for me. By the time we see him in his movie, dude, it feels like nothing has moved on since Endgame. Really, like yeah, nothing. There's yeah, it's boring, lame. Oh, they destroyed an enormous empire. I guess Ant Man's still an Avenger. Tales of the Jedi season two. I'm very excited for it. Can't wait for yeah. more Ahsoka. Now we'll get someone else. Maybe Balin and Shin. Would love to see an era of Star Wars that force users that force users have children and become a nobility like ancient China. Well, Count Dooku uh -huh. was nobility on his home planet of Serrano, um, which is kind of why he had some of the attitudes he had. It's interesting. Thanks, dude. Favorite trooper design? It's the scout trooper for me. Also, for favorite legends, villain, antagonist? Uh, Plagueis. I think Jarek is massively underrated as a character. Yeah, Jarek doesn't get a whole lot of play. Um, I mean, I think that Darth Crate is super fucking interesting because of what we see at towards the end of you know the books when it comes to uh, Fate of the Jedi and him helping out Luke in the battle against Abeloth. Uh, but then obviously the one Sith, what we see in the comic books, like his plan that got set into motion. I think he's really fucking intriguing, and the fact that he was alive in like the the prequel era as well. Um, yeah, interesting Darth villain. Have been in the sequels. Like to me. Jason Solo, Darth Cadis, is my favorite character in Star Wars. So obviously, there's times where he's a hero. There's times where he becomes a villain. Um, so if you're t talking about like my favorite antagonist, it would probably have to be him. Edwards Gilroy. Uh, oh, I know Mahler's probably going to say Edwards Gilroy. Probably Ryan too. If I'm giving anyone a chance at new Star Wars Disney content, it would be Gilroy. Yeah, he's the most reliable from my point of view. I'd say David John. 
I, I would I say go with my boys. Fucking, you'll you'll find me fucking swinging on a rope somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gun, gun to my head which of these would i choose i'd pull the trigger that's the answer um but probably edward skill ryan ryan looks like ryan johnson minus the estrogen thank you luke soka what do you guys think of savage oppressing clone wars do you think it's oh we talked about this mm -hmm. I, I love the name he's dope <laughs> can you please show mahler the scene where Hera confronts her father The best scene in Rebels, and it's a shame how Ahsoka butchered her character. I don't mm. remember the scene. Yeah, so that's... Uh, I, I believe they're talking about the scene from the same time frame when Thrawn gets introduced. And they're on uh, Ryloth. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, the, Hera, Hera's dad's like a fucking resistance leader on Ryloth, and uh, Thrawn is kind of taken over. Remember they even got the picture of fucking Hera there? Um and everything, but I don't know specifically the scene he's talking about or what season it is. But Mahler will watch that after he does an entire watch through of uh, the Clone Wars micro series, Clone Wars, and TCW. Well, so, and he also also has to watch the Clone Wars movie. By the way, we can't forget that. I think what people nah, be really no happy. No one's to... pointless. pointless. No, Damn. no, no, no. Well, if you want to talk about pointless, no how, about, how about the many fucking random episodes of like R two D two and C three PO just fucking yeah, yeah, jerking yeah. each other off in yeah, TCW? Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah, I know. he's gonna watch all those, so he's got to watch the Clone Wars. Movie I know, too. I know. Look, next week, people are gonna be really happy to know that out of all of the content I could have seen, I will have seen episodes one, two, and three of season three of Bad Batch. They're gonna be like, yes, that is what they want to hear my opinion on. So, would I rather be a Saiyan or a Jedi? A Saiyan, hands down. I could fly. I can go Super Saiyan. I can with like hundred percent Super Saiyan. Hundred percent Saiyan. I don't. I don't even know what a Saiyan means. But you're missing out. I don't really want to be a Jedi. I want to. I don't want to do selfless things. Seems fucking boring. <laughs> be evil Jedi. Ron would be a Sith. Like I, I like. I don't need to go full Sith, but just let me do my own. Just maybe a Force user. All right. Yeah. Ryan would get too annoyed by someone and be like, "Ah, fuck you." <laughs> I would be snapping necks like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. Just having a bad day. Hey, I'm, just in, I'm just in traffic. Some asshole cuts me off. Like, just take their car and like, toss it off. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just no remorse. Yeah, fuck it. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the Darth Plagueis novel, I think it's my favorite Star Wars novel so far. I'm really nervous about what they do with him in Acolyte. Maybe they won't even mention him. And even that would be stupid if they don't. Yeah, that's the problem. Is there the era they've set it in? He can't not be around, yeah. um, but they also should not touch it. You know Yoda's going to be in this, right? He has to be. Oh, fuck. You didn't think about that, huh? I didn't think about that, man. Yoda has to be in this. It's impossible for him not to be. It's going to be great. Fuck, dude. Please don't fuck up Yoda. He's going to be like, he's just going to be basically telling all these other characters we can introduce that they're, they're really the best. Respect your pronouns, I must. That's that's the kind of fucking Yoda we're going to get in this one. <laughs> <laughs> you killed him again. Ryan, you're losing your mind. I'm, I'm losing it. Ryan loses his mind. So, I don't know. I can't. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. Once again, you've proved if you'll excuse me. Are we in the clear? I think we We're got good. it. I like it. can clip that now. All right. I wasn't in the frame. Yeah, I think you're good. <sighs> just whenever just... Ryan says something controversial, play the you've done that yourself. And we'll be fine. <sighs> yeah. All right. Yeah, what, uh, is, you... what a terrible way for Obi-Wan to walk out of Padme, just for the record. A terrible way when Anakin immediately thinks that they're probably fucking. What a terrible way for Obi-Wan to walk out of that just, ship. Yeah, just his hands it. on his hips like I just clapped her cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> just the, the worst thing he could have possibly done. Yeah, literally. Maybe he did. You don't know. I mean, that's my head cannon. It's a long, <laughs> uh, long plane ride. Do you think the Game of Thrones writers should get another chance to do a trilogy? Well, funny thing is, didn't they rush season eight so that they could start working on Star Wars when they got fired? 
I yeah. um I don't want them writing anything to do with Game of Thrones ever again. They made the worst a song of ice and fire related content in the history of the world. I would rather they stop. Yo, Nick. Well, I, I think that they should I'm interested to see what they do with Netflix. I think they've got a movie that's coming out finally. Like they, I'm interested to see what they do by themselves. Right? We saw them do a, a good adaptation, a great adaptation in a lot of ways from something they had source material for. They ran out of source material. They fucked it up. Let's see them do something that they're creating, you know, and, you know, give it a chance. But they sure, certainly shouldn't just be given a chance to do a Star Wars trilogy because. Loney effing up Thrawn is the most insulting and hypocritical thing he could do. He won't let people do anything with Ahsoka with him knowing. The Thrawn, Thrawn is like one guy that you just don't mess up. I, and they made him kind of just a an idiot. He's a bit of a clown, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think they made a mistake by put bringing him into Rebels, because when you bring a character like that in, and his like his fucking adversaries are the Rebels goon squad, like the Scooby Doo type of fucking good characters. Yeah, I feel like that was the complete wrong way to bring him in. That's why I was fucking kicking and screaming when they brought Thrawn in then. Yeah, because I don't feel like that's the right way to bring in a character with that type of gravitas in yeah, a fucking you're right. Disney XD show written by Filoni. You know, you're right. Um, so to me, his character is fairly consistent with what I would expect that they've already done to his character. Unfortunately, you're right. Yeah, it is like a fucking Scooby Doo. Back when at at chat said Mahler was too long, I ran the math and the runtime of all his videos combined. Is about the same as Mahler's. Well, I mean, you know, Who's if that? I make one six hour video per year, it probably does line up with a lot of other channels anyway. Uh, AT80 chat, um, fucking crazy moron who's desperate to defend everything to do with like sequels and despises me, probably hates you as well. No way, he definitely hates you. Oh, nice, dude. He does not like me either. You no, if, hate, dude, hate if, people because they have a different opinion on movies. That's if they hate me and balanced. theory, Ryan, you're just there's no chance. <laughs> it's doors locked on you, buddy. Yeah, I'm I'm the bottom of the fucking barrel when it comes to that shit. Nice, dude. A lot of centered individuals out there. Gal Gadot has a Leia recast as a Leia. No, recast. no. Kalel, no. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Your points about canon is mostly true. But if something is so lore breaking that nothing else makes sense, then I don't think it's canon. It, that's that's the thing to me. It's always going to be uh, it's different. To me, canon is what the fucking by the letter of the law, like what they've come and stated. Um, and other than that, it's just however people feel about it. Because what is completely lore breaking to me might be something that's fucking clapped at and celebrated by someone else. Yeah, you know that that that's the tough part. That's why I oh, see I, I, I get what people mean when they say head cannon. It's just if you like something or not. Henry was cracking his elbows in the MI scene. No, he was reloading his fists. He, he was yeah, he was reloading. <laughs> they talk about it behind the scenes. Her like I, I don't Sherman. know what he was initially doing, but like after he did that, it looked like he was reloading. They're like do that again. I heard Ricky Gervais though. was almost going to be Benji in Mission Impossible, which is funny because he and Simon Pegg hate each other. Really? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I feel like I should know that. Bro, someone in chat said, Cal Kestis, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean Connery or Daniel Craig. But, you know, I also I also liked Timothy Dalton. I liked uh, Roger Moore. But, yeah, Sean Connery's number one and then... Daniel Craig. If Timothy Dalton's movies came out 15 years later, I think people would have fucking loved him as Bond. Probably. I, think I don't think people early. are ready Dude. for the shift between Roger Moore, like slapstick, and the yeah. or, and this real serious, dark Timothy Dalton shit. Timothy Dalton in Hot Fuzz, like playing that villain, there's already enough proofs. Like he would have been a great Bond, like to have longer than we actually got. Is he still? And also, um, sorry, is he still with us? Oh, yeah, yeah, as far as I know. Um, I think so. And as for, like, Daniel Craig, like, I love Casino Royale, but 
I can't disassociate the fact that he just hates the role so much. You know what I mean? Like, and you watch him, you fuck, you feel it. Um, but then, you know, my pick is like Pierce Brosnan, so I can't say much. He has some of the goofiest I James didn't. Bond movies. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Pierce's James Bond. Didn't I, like love, I love Bros. I love Brosnan's Bond. He was oh. it, like he was a good balance between, like, again, shifting to from Dalton. He, he he they got some of the comedy back and a little bit of the the uh, the funny stuff but kept it serious enough that it felt like a good golden eye to me is the perfect bond movie i think they nail it golden eye is awesome the game um we were talking about this the other day actually when when was i talking about this thunderball's really fucking good great um goldfinger as well like the first five connery ones are fucking awesome dr Mm -hmm. no um uh, dr no goldfinger thunderball um yeah then you get to the roger moore era and it's like flip a coin whether it's one of the best ones or one of the fucking shittiest ones you've yeah. seen um, you know, Moon- moonraker was cool i think Moonraker's awful i think it's cool but i, but I, I think, think the, the movie idea is terrible cool. i think the idea was well yeah it was terrible but the idea was cool they go to the fucking moon there's the like jaws just, there i that prefer fucking... the uh I prefer Austin Powers as Spy Who Shagged Me has the parody of Moonraker almost. Yeah, yeah I know. That's great. <laughs> that shit's funny. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could have liked Daniel Craig's entire run better. I, I think Casino Royale is fucking amazing. It's one of the best Bond movies we've ever seen. Yeah. But the problem was they didn't let him move off Vesper. They made that his entire fucking arc. And mm. I, I, like, I know Daniel Craig doesn't portray what we view as what james bond should look like because of sean connery but in terms of his portrayal it's a little more in line with the ian fleming novels like in terms of the way he acts and everything um and i just wish that they would have let him move on from vesper but instead that became his entire arc and you just have to cut that out and be like this isn't this isn't in line with bond because it's not it's supposed to be a it's supposed to be a start, a fresh start, a reboot, and start from the beginning of his origins. But they still have M, who then dies, and they bring in M from, who's supposed to portray M from the initial Connery movies. So, like, doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, and so it's it's kind of hard yeah. to justify any anything in it being real. Which I guess yeah, we just talked about headcanon. But... It's supposed to be, like, the first one, right? Yeah, Casino Royale's literally his origin. Right. right, you get you get that's his like first fucking mission. You see how he became a double O and all that mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the yeah. problem is, it's M from what we saw who took over for the male M. It's M from Brosnan shit. So it, like it, none of it makes any sense. That's a little confusing. Before before Ray Fiennes comes in and becomes the M that we remember from the old Bond movies. <laughs> As if that's so not confusing at all, you know? Yeah, it's very confusing. Yeah, like, trying to trying to explain this to anybody that doesn't, like, no, no, that hasn't watched all 27 James Bond movies or whatever, you're probably confused as fuck. I guess it's just not even supposed to make any sense. They're like, well, there's a different Bond actor for every movie, so who cares? <laughs> Pr- kinda. I mean, the fact that he dies in the last one Yeah, what one the now, fuck is that? I don't, I don't know, man. We'll have to see How what they're up to sense? in the next one. The... the this is the way I say it, like, for the way they've portrayed Daniel Craig's James Bond in this, like, Daniel Craig James Bond standalone universe, it it, it is kind of, it makes sense for his character to end that way. Yeah. Like, because he's just so fucking hung Soft up on this now. one bitch that he fucked a couple times. Um, and he could just never get over her, and on everything was about her in the end. On Which, I mean, I mean, listen... She's pretty. She's pretty hot. I, mean, I get you. I'm like, talking about it. Vesper, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. I can't remember. Was there like a big callback to that in in the last one? I yeah, like that. Once. That's kind of like always where his fucking mind is at, and he finally does fall in love with the other chick. Um, yeah, you know, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And they have Fuck. the fucking kid. Yeah. And then he. Uh kills himself well he sacrifices himself for and it. also blofeld like jamming in blofeld's oh. entire origin story that they're actually adopted brothers who's then their adopted dad died and like blah 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 that was so much to try to cram into one fucking movie yeah again austin powers fucking handled that better too the doctor <laughs> <laughs> brothers 
If Mace survived, I hope he became a pod racer. The second human to do it. The first with one hand. Mace Windu, pod racer. Take my money. What's up, Mahler? I like your Resident Evil review. Good work, mate. Oh, thank you. It's one of my older ones. Force Awakens was overhyped at the time. I thought Rogue One was better. Rogue One is better. Give us all with Han helping attack the Empire, an obvious enemy of Jabba's underworld dealings, would have given him some debt forgiveness. Now Jabba can do more ill shit. Give me a give me a Jabba the Hut Disney Plus series. Just Jabba does doing ill shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hut. The Star Wars story. Hut. <laughs> ill shit. Da Vinci painting Mona Lisa, not canon because he sold it. Just saw your IG story with no, that's, we getting that's not how that works. The the canon would is over time. So George had canon controlled with license and then Disney do. Mm. Like, yep. Time uh, no, is linear. No, no interview with Gina. We just uh we just hung out, went to dinner uh with Jay and um that was it. Masters of the Air is a World War II series about the men of the Army Corps who piloted B-17 bombers over Germany. Shows all they went through flying at several thousand feet over enemy territory. Masters of the Air. Yeah, it's the one that somebody mentioned earlier. I've heard it's good. Do you think Old Republic writers and Legends writers should take over? Take over. That's what I would have loved kind of from the beginning instead of this like story group we ended up with. I will happily gamble them instead of Filoni Favreau. Yeah, like cut kind of the way it used to work was a lot of these writers would brainstorm stuff like that. They'd get together, they'd they'd you know, they'd be at conventions or whatever, they'd meet together for you know a couple days in a row and try to plan out their next book series. And there was a lot of planning that had to go into that ship because by the end, what they actually had, it was very unique, and I've never really seen it done anywhere else before. But um the last couple series that we had. He had two nine book series, Fate of the Jedi and um, uh, Legacy of the Force. Nine book series each, three different authors, and each author would do a different one. So they'd all be writing them at the same time, coordinating all the shit that had to happen that was going to play out, but they'd release them basically every four months. So one person take a year to write each one. Mm -hmm. And so they'd, you know, release boom, 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 boom. And they, although they felt a little bit different depending on which author it was, and maybe someone would focus on slightly different characters, the planning it took to have those play out the way it did is far beyond anything these fucks are doing right now in Star Wars. Um, and yeah, I would have loved to see that. People in the different eras with their different expertise that had written for it before coming together and you know having some grand plan. Yeah, it would have been nice. Oh, well. Yeah, oh, well. If Elon buys Disney and cleans house at Lucasfilm and will 100% not be woke, what EU story should be next? Who do you want to direct, write, and cast? Uh, I honestly would love to see a young Palpatine movie. With Palpatine Plagueis and basically the, the, yeah. I mean, yeah. just what sequels, but not shit. So I'm happy to do the, I would like to see the Thrawn trilogy adapted or, uh, Whatever have you? Who would I want to direct, write, and cast? Though Oof. that's a tough that, one. That's a heavy question, right there. J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and Colin Trevorrow. Oh, God, dude. Uh, <laughs> Charmino Bay Chinoy. Christopher Nolan. Uh, Mahler, what do you think of Arthur Morgan's story arc in Red Dead Two? I have not played Red Dead Two. I'm afraid. What? <laughs> what? What? How is that possible? Why is that? Um, why? Why do you think I would have played it? Uh, well, one, it's it was one of the most popular games when it came out. Um, and two, it I think it's pretty well revered as a game itself. Oh yeah, people recommend it all the time, but yeah, I haven't gotten to it yet. That's that surprises me. Um, now, Arthur Morgan's story kind of depends on some of your choices, though. So that's an interesting mm. question. So I hope you meeting followers and next positive vibes all around compared to the goobers who lurk in your mentions. Yeah, dude, nobody takes Twitter and shit seriously. You guys actually take those guys seriously? They're not real. They live in the Truman Show that they created. You missed the Pharaoh hat. It looks great. <laughs> it looks amazing. 
You mentioned Avatar The Last Airbender live action at the start. They are butchering the animated series, and no wonder the original creators left. You know, it's interesting. Um, somebody had me saying, you mentioned that there was like a drama with the newest clip, like you're being sold a lie or something. And I was like, no, I, I saw it happening. I saw thousands of likes of different tweets arguing with each other about whether or not it was a good adaptation. I'm not invested in whether or not it is. I know people who are. So we'll see what happens. Did you see Cameron Monaghan talking about playing Cal in live action? Doesn't just want to stand around. Wants his character respected. I rags. Uh, yeah, he, he said he wants to do shit if it's the right thing. Well, that'll be good. Yeah. What's up, boys? Curious on Ryan and Mahler's thoughts on the notion that Marsha Lucas helped save Lucas' original cut of Star Wars. I've seen different takes. Mm. I line up with Nerd Anonymous. Nerd Anonymous, I think. His video on it is fantastic. And it's something I wouldn't mind you guys seeing at some point. Not, we don't need to see that on a stream, but you should see it in general. My gut instinct, not having watched that video, is that Marsha Lucas certainly was like a, a part of everything. And I think it's probably been a little bit overstated that she's the only reason why any of this fucking happened. That's my gut feeling about it. That's my gut feeling, too. Is but, it, okay, what she... She's the reason everything's great. It's like she I'm sure she chopped it up real nice and made it look good. But you can't take it away that George is the one who created all of this shit. Filmed it, shot it, like would because she she arranged it nicely. That's amazing. That's that that is a huge part of it. But I don't think, you know, it's like people are just completely discrediting George. Why? Yeah, that um, seems to be almost what it feels like more often. Uh, like that's the reason people are praising her is to discredit George for some reason. Yeah, but like what do you what off. do you think, Mahler? That is essentially the video's point of view. Is the the hyper controversial conclusion it has is Marsha Lucas was an editor and she did her job and she did it well. The yeah. the other two editors did their jobs and they did them well. George Lucas did his job and he did it well. Exactly. And the George Lucas did a lot of work. And then the bulk of the video that really convinced me was a lot of things I've accepted as true and not true. A lot of casual statements have been made about how Star Wars was created, and that video proves them wrong. And I was like, oh shit, he's got sources too. Damn. What's his name? Man, if only he'd respond to an email. Nerdonymous is uh, how Star Wars was saved in the edit was saved in the edit. That's what his video is called, I think. Meaning, of course, the notion that it was saved in the edit is something that was rescued as a concept in editing by editing out information. Hmm. I, see. Indeed. I like the Revan book. It's controversial for some people, though. Pretty hype for BB3. Much love. Much love, man. See you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you could only play one Star Wars game the rest of your life, which one would it be? Mm. God. Um, probably just gun for like a really really big one i guess probably jedi academy um yeah probably jedi academy um yeah i don't know that's just a fucking question i really like kotor too i love battlefield too well oh, battlefront sorry battlefront um like the og battlefront too yeah 2005 or whatever Hmm. I mean, Force Unleashed can't go wrong. Ethereum Shy Guy. What's up, dude? Fun with your fun with chaos now? Okay, just wanted to say thanks for coming out to meet everyone and thanks for the free saber. It's the best NeoPixel saber I have. I plan on buying Anakin Ep2. Right on, dude. Thanks so much. Yeah. For everyone watching theorysabers.com, we just dropped the mall. You get two blades in one, with one. And uh, the Annie 2. So, really, really great quality hilts. Go check them out right now. Just drop them. Uh, Theorysabers.com. Name suggestion, Rogue Squad. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, question to panel. What would your ideal recast of the prequels look like? Fuck. There'd be no recast. Um, well, some of them you have to recast, right? Some people either a dead or probably wouldn't come back, but Charlto. Charlto Copley. Who's that? I mean, he's a district nine guy. What was his name? Charles Dance. Charles Dance. <sighs> yeah, like imagine um we might have to recast Palpatine. He might be too old now, right? Like Yeah. 
I don't, I don't even know who we would pick to sort of nail that role as well as he did, but you know, me. It's hard, man. It's like talking about these recasts for the Harry Potter fucking series. Oh, dude, that's freaking like, how do you do that? Impossible. Yeah, it's like, how do you, how do you cast McGonagall and Snape and Hagrid and no. No. like more, more so? It's for like the adults than it is for the kids. Yeah, like, I'm dude. fine seeing some other fuck it, fucking dude as, as Harry Potter. Like, fuck Daniel Radcliffe. Give me another Harry Potter. But for some of, like, the adults, it's tough for me to see p other people. It's going to be impossible. Those Snape? Roles. Are you kidding? No way. A lot of people want Adam Driver to play Snape, um, which I actually think would be a banger casting. Sure. Um, because Snape's described as ugly, and Adam Driver's kind of fucking ugly. Um, and he's also, like, the right age because the ages were completely off in the movies. But... I think Driver's a pretty good looking guy. No? I think Adam Driver looks weird as shit. <laughs> but I think that's why a lot of girls like him. I think he's one of those weird looking dudes that girls are like, wow, he's so weird. <laughs> you don't think so? But he's got a unique face, that's for sure. It's different. Yeah. A lot of girls in chat are going to back me up. They're like, he's the cute kind of ugly. Hmm. Well, there's two. There's, there's a Smeagol cute kind of ugly, and then there's, I guess... Wait, <laughs> Smeagol's cute. Smeagol? <laughs> he is cute. What the fuck? He is cute. We should write our own versions to compete with Disney. I have incredible ideas. Or you can't uh, even get your spaces in line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Uh, I'd love to see your soul. ideas, though. Damn. Killed him. I'm, I'm sorry. He's probably on a fucking mobile device or something, you know? Some fucking Ryan. I shouldn't have done that. It's not the Jedi way. You did say he doesn't want to be a Jedi. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, I don't know. I am a Senate. There. <laughs> Rebel is mostly good, and that it ended at season three where Vader walks after killing Ahsoka. Worlds between worlds is lore breaking and Thrawn's a joke. Wasn't the end of season two? When Vader and Ahsoka? Am I wrong with that? I think there were three seasons. I didn't mind I there Rebels. There were four seasons of Rebels. I didn't I didn't I didn't hate it. I just think it's not as good as Clone Wars, and it was not my favorite. In my opinion, Ahsoka Thrawn is so bad that even General Trench can dump on him. He would have been awesome and scary if he was taken from the sequel legend. Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. General Trench seemed more imposing than Thrawn, which is all right. True. <laughs> yeah. Imagine so the what, like you, you could craft like a super well written super chat that was like super funny and I probably wouldn't chuckle, but that that little one I laughed at. Oh, he's said that a million times on EFAP. <laughs> I think it's because he doesn't know what else to say. Imagine Sometimes he'll the... say Molly is straight, which is equally offensive. Oh, that's fucking horrible. Yeah. Imagine as the Allied forces are moving into Berlin, a blue-skinned Hitler is like, you know, in a way, I feel like we've won this war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, don't do it. Don't have him say shit like that when you bring him back again. It's going to be so memed. Don't do it. What's the most offensive science fiction movie? Um, <laughs> I want to hear what you guys have picked up before I, I say my controversial one. I don't like most offensive science fiction movie. Um, like I again, I think The Last Jedi probably did the most damage to my favorite science fiction fantasy fucking thing, Star Wars. So. Be tough to not oh, say yeah. that. I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I hated Force Awakens too. So, well, I mean, we got a wonderful selection of films here. Like, we could pick that. We could also pick uh, like Star Trek Into Darkness. We could pick uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Some people aren't gonna like that, but that's okay. It's still shit. Then we could pick Alien Resurrection, for example. Alien Covenant, Prometheus, Alien Three, even to a lesser extent. Um. I would probably inch toward picking fucking Interstellar. I hate that movie, but you know what? There's I would a have thought you'd like it. You know, I think that's fair. I think I would have thought I would have liked it. I think I went yeah. to see it thinking I would like it. Yeah, but I didn't. Far worse than him dying. He didn't try to escape. Who? 
Oh, who are we talking about at that point? I don't know. I forgot. Is it maybe Saul Guerrero? Ryan, you killed me with that Yoda impersonation, Lameo. Still laughing at that shit. Haha. -ha. Thoughts on Pedro Fantastic forecasting that Marvel art was ass. I, I don't Marvel. like Pedro. Um, as as Reed Richards, it's gonna be tough for you to convince me that Pedro Pascal is the smartest person in the world. Um, I mean, that was a right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, obviously, the writing's gonna have a lot of work to do as well. Um, some of the other ones I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, but um, I mean, I have no hope for really anything Marvel related. So it's tough to get too hyped or excited about it. But I'm glad you like my Yoda impersonation. I will see that. Obi Wan. Oh, what's y'all's take on Vespa Chase in Boba series? It's shit. <laughs> Stupid. So bad. Is Hemlock gonna die in Bad Batch or get replaced? Probably die. Kenobi season two. Say no to Darth Shaniqua. Who's Darth Shaniqua? Reva. That's all on you, buddy. <laughs> was, oh, God. There's nothing I did. God damn it. One EU book you'd like to see a movie. For me, it's Truce at Bakura or maybe one of the Rogue or Wraith Squadron books. Oh, Truce at Bakura, is a, that would be a crazy fucking movie. Um, takes pla place like days after fucking Return of the Jedi. Um... I, I would love to see a proper adaptation of the Rogue Squadron books. That'd be phenomenal. I don't think that's what Patty Jenkins was going to give us. I would have liked to have seen her movie. I, I Christopher Lee be... is Palpatine? Wait. Mm. What? He's I don't dead, so he can't so. do it. He's not around. But yeah, but also, why? I got my Smeag... Oh, my... <laughs> I got my Smeagol a sister plush. Oh. Oh, my sister is a Smeagol plush. <laughs> <laughs> my Smeagol... Uh, Mahler, so much for your two hours, eh? Yeah, uh, four now. We've almost done like two episodes in a row, at least by the, the you know, the way See, we. This is how you get them, ladies and gentlemen. What I hated in the Ahsoka show is how they treated Thrawn, made him a throwaway villain with a dad bod. Uh, I mean, I don't know about that's the, the good thing. reason to hate him is the throwaway villain part. An absolute fucking moron would be why most people didn't like the portrayal. But hey, but also yeah. he shouldn't have been built like that. Just no. How do you feel about Chewie being killed by a moon in the New Jedi Order books? One spoiler alert, but two, I thought it was a fucking epic way for him to go out. Wait, Chewie's um, dead? Yeah, he had a fist fight with a moon in the boxing arena, and uh, he lost. We didn't have a fist fight, but a moon was coming down on this planet of Serpendal, and they were trying to evacuate people. And uh, wait, he. Go ahead. I'm, I'm very confused. Yeah, Dead. Chewbacca dies around 20 years after uh, the movies. The first oh, book oh, in the, the new, new Jedi. Oh, sorry. First mistake. book in the New Jedi Order, um, Vector Prime. Chewbacca dies. And it really fucks up Han. <laughs> like it really fucks up Han. And he blames Anakin for it. Anakin Solo, his youngest child, because Chewie actually goes out to save Anakin. And he saves his life and brings him back in. And as the moon is crashing down and the atmosphere is fucking bursting into flame and winds are getting insane because all the different pressures, they can't get to Chewie um, in time. And Anakin has to make the decision while Han's sitting there, like looking, trying to get the foul or trying to get to Chewie, Anakin has to make the decision to take off and save everybody there, including himself and his dad and the hundreds of people they have on the Falcon and leave Chewie. And like Han sees Chewbacca as like the moon's coming down, like fist rays roaring at the moon that's fucking coming down. And that's how Chewbacca dies. Interesting. And Anakin feels like this immense guilt over it. And Han. Um, Han for a couple books gets to like a dark place and you know he did again this is the way you like show these characters have flaws and can have failures and things like that and still not completely destroy their entire character so there's a couple books where he doesn't really know what to do with himself and he's putting more blame on Anakin than he should and Anakin takes that guilt and Anakin carries that guilt with him the, literally the fucking rest of his life and uh, 
how you know han feels so regretful over a lot of it but it takes yeah. another kind of family emergency where he realizes he he needs to be strong for everybody before he really comes back and gets fully over it how'd you feel about the whole yadel thing with how yadel sacrificed herself for anakin and like he yeah, felt i don't remorse for that too yeah um yadel. again i i think that it was done super well uh in the comic books and yeah. um death matters right that, that, that I, I feel like we talk about this a lot i feel like deaths can be very important and very impactful not just for like a conclusion of a character arc but to demonstrate the importance of sacrifice for the impact it might leave on different people and um i i didn't know like significant attachment to yaddle you know fucking oh she looks like a fucking girl yoda whatever but the way they did in the comics, it's like it made an impact and it was important for Anakin's arc and everything and the things that he learned in the Clone Wars. And I don't know. Like, I, I was cool with it. Baseball is better than all Star Wars sequel movies. I agree. Interstellar is ass. That guy's right. Did you know Ryan's favorite Chinese dish is... All right. You didn't want to say it? No. Ryan, thoughts on 1992 space movie? Google it. Brian, don't do it. Um, I already know what that movie is. Uh, I've not reviewed it yet, but if I ever do, I'll put out a put out a review on my Mark Apples live channel. Name the show Rebel Outpost. <laughs> We're not rebels. Uh, Theory and Mahler. What do you think? Well, I guess we are rebels. Uh, what do you think of Cyril? I think it's fucking lame. Damn. Damn. Character. Uh, complete opposite. I think it's great that we finally have a lower level sort of drone in the empire that believes somewhat in the order and function of uh, order, I guess, and sort of security. And it was really cool to see someone underneath someone who's underneath someone who's underneath someone basically just pointing out, yeah, two guys died and nothing's being done about it. And then his superior being like, that's how things run. We just don't make any waves. And then our sector doesn't get any extra eyes. And then thus, you know, everything nice can run smoothly and all the efforts he's put into making things more aware has spiraled out of control but it looks like he's still by the end of the season committing to the empire is order makes things better and that he wants to rise in the ranks and stuff i i find that extremely compelling and i'm fucking glad we finally got a character like that because it took ages if i see another bowl of cereal i'm gonna have a fit. <laughs> okay <laughs> bowl of cereals screws and bricks that's what does it um, as long as I just go back to Adol, I will once they release season two. <laughs> I'll be there. With Wait, all, dude, uh, Starcraft my when Andor two comes out is going to be the most probably popping show because of you and me. Yeah, and then <laughs> Ryan's gonna great, sitting man. there like, "Mom, Dad, please." Yeah, literally. Yeah, you guys like. Usually, I'm the one with like some fucking outrageous opinion on something. That's going to be you guys at the like the opposites and me kind of in the middle for that one. Probably. We haven't seen season two yet. But. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I reckon you guys will like season two. Because they're probably going to make big things happen. There'll be colors in Eva it. Yeah, red will be in it, for sure. You think you think Vader's going to be in it? Oh, I don't know about Vader. Maybe. I don't know. I think Krennic's going to be in there. K2SO will be in it, right? Probably. It has to be. And they're doing time jumps in it, too, which is going to be interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. The reason why Wade the L. Is... Sorry, Wade. I hope Wade turns up in it. Oh, at some you're point. Best, your best friend. Wade is pretty cool. One of the best deaths in Star Wars, I would say. Well, yeah. It's a... oh, yeah. I... Is there a reason why the L in Mahler's name is capitalized? It's a super tiny detail, but it's always made me curious for some reason. I think the original reason I ever did it was I just thought it looked different, um, but. In retrospect, probably shouldn't have done it because a lot of people think it's Maula as a result. It literally is just a flourish that I thought could be interesting. There's no like grander meaning or purpose to it than that. Yeah, I think it looks better than if it was just Maula. A little more Thank you. enunciation on the L. 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 Hey, biggest super chat of the night from Crit Nature. We thank you for that. Hey, Theory, watch you since 2017. Just wanted to come in and thank you and what you're doing. When does the comic coverage come back? I also would enjoy for Ryan to be a part of it with his knowledge of the EU and maybe Mahler as a voiceover. Oh man, I'd love to collab on the boy with the boys uh, on some comics and stuff. That'd be cool. Ryan, do you want to make content together? 
Yeah, maybe. It depends on what it is. Like, that shit's a lot of work. You know like that. You made them for fucking years. Like, yeah. making those comic book uh, videos is a lot of fucking work. You know what, bro? Editing. I've seriously gotten so fast at them, I could do it pretty quick. I don't like. Crazy. I used to have to write a script and all that. Now I could just like record as I'm reading through the comic and just like come up with shit. On the oh fly yeah, yeah, yeah. And then edit it because the pictures are already there. So it's just it's actually very quick. So if you ever want to, yeah, do some lore stuff, man, I'm down. We could look into do something like that. It might be cool. Yeah, maybe you can do some like lore explanations for videos or something like some character Ooh. that you find interesting. I'd be neat. Yeah. I did a couple of those back in the early, early start of my channel, and I was like, God, it's so much work. Yeah. It is, but you know what? I have amazing editors. I just record now. I don't have to do it myself anymore. Um, even though I, I think the way I edit is, well, it's like to my design, like what I imagine in my head. But I have guys that know my style now, and so they do a great job. And I just record it, boom, send it off, and they deliver it back. And then I do the music, and I do like some other little edits in there. But for the most part, man, it's it's pretty streamlined. Awesome. If you ever want to get on that, let me know. Let's do it. What's up, Nova? Krista Nova? I don't think that's Krista. Look, <laughs> it's fucking Carl. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Well, that's the end of the soupies. I'm really hungry. Uh, as you guys probably noticed, my energy started to dip around the Timothy Dalton conversation. The grift is complete. Yeah, literally. What a, what a terrible time to get low energy. Timothy Dalton's badass. Yeah. Yeah, I know. No, that was just around the time where I'm like, all right, I need food. I haven't been sleeping much lately. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Too excited. Yeah. Too excited to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Need to crack a Dr. Pepper like Asmin. Is his name Ben Swallow? Oh, Ben Swallow. <laughs> <laughs> ben Swallow. Uh, now ben we know why him and Luke had such a contentious relationship. Ah, oh, fuck, dude. Jesus. Can you, yeah, can you send a uh, recording voice, voiceover or something like that? For the intro? Say, yeah. and Ryan. <laughs> as, as awkward as possible. <laughs> and Ryan. And Ryan. Like, <laughs> Kalel, no. Kalel, no. Okay. And Ryan. We'll just say, and me. <laughs> and me. Yeah, 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 dude, just say, and me. That'd be good, actually. With theory. And Mola. And, and me. me. Yeah. Bitch. And then Pharaoh Ryan comes on screen. Oh, next yeah. stream will be next Monday, man. Well, I got the watch party tomorrow with you guys, so stay tuned for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Although, Ryan, I don't sound like Elon Musk, do I? I don't know. You? I, I wouldn't have thought that. That's the first I've heard of it. Not really. It's not the impression I got. Um, I gotta do a quick plug. Vent for two. Do you need some preparation H Mauler? Yes, that's a good one. I I that's <laughs> just makes me think of Austin Powers again, where they have all the preparations related to the planet. <laughs> this is preparation H. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seth Green. Hi yeah. boys. <laughs> Announcing the drop of the two new sabers. If you want to check them out, the Theory Sabers Instagram is popping, as well as we got the website fully, well, not fully operational, but we got the three for sale. If you want to go grab one of your choice or all of them, some guys are grabbing all of them right now. So um, go to theorysabers.com or Theory Sabers Instagram. If you have any questions, we got our help team answering your questions 24 7. I'm lying, they answer it once a day. Usually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm 24 7 because sometimes I'm up till 3 4 a.m. at the help desk just like answering online all your guys' stuff. So, um, yeah, go check it out. We appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed today's stream. Is there anything you guys want to announce? Nope. Um, I want to announce that Mahler does a show <laughs> called EFAP. You liar. All right. And I also want to, somebody sent a super chat in. That says Mikey Angelo for Ozzy not two ninety nine says Ryan is a spitting image of Jonathan Majors. Mm. Well, That's I am great. a great man. All right. What's the upper limit you guys are willing to tolerate in regards to the extent of force powers? The upper limit. 
Um, for me, as as weird as this sounds, I would probably want maxed out of whatever the highest power we saw in the OT plus fifty percent of that on top, and that would be a special circumstance. I know that sounds really weird, but like you probably know what I mean. Instead of having to explain it further than that, uh, Yoda moving that X wing was significant shit. Okay, that's already t- teetering on the top move uh, as far as I'm go. concerned. There we go. Another four hour conversation coming up. Hey, that's 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 my POV. Right, you go. We could do this in under a minute, I'm sure. Um, I'm willing to uh, accept a lot more than that. Um, obviously, like even the prequels, we have. I, I feel like more than that, don't you? All right. So listen, mean? listen to this. I'm gonna debunk Mahler's thing in like two seconds here. So, <clears throat> Dagobah had a dark side force nexus. It was affecting Yoda the entire time. He was super weak. He also didn't use his force powers for the entirety of his time on Dagobah because he didn't want to alert the Empire. So he was rusty as shit. So it's out of practice. Yeah, very out of practice. If you think, think Obi Wan buy out of any of that propaganda? So that's why. That's why Yoda probably went there for the fucking dark side force nexus to shield his presence. He did go there. Yeah. Um, I. It's tough. Um. It kind of does feel like if you get in a situation where you have to up and up and up and up it and like become more impressive or more impressive, you get to a crazy situation. Yeah. I don't think that we should have people pulling Star Destroyers out of the sky like in Force Unleashed. However, do I think that you can provide a little bit of guidance to it as it's crashing? Yeah, a little bit. I think yeah. I think that that's like believable, right? Why not? Um, yeah, fuck that. But then you also have to but then you also have to ask the question, <laughs> okay. If you're, if there's some kind of um, something that's giving you a power boost, whether it's a dark side force entity that's trying to control you and tap into you, like we saw with uh, Exar Kun and Kip Duran and what he was able to do, pulling the Sun Crusher out, shit like that. Those are questions you got to ask. Um, it's fun. It's fun to it, think. About. Ryan, what was the prequel power you think, like to to Boonks, any kind of uh, excessive power from? Well, the I, I, well I think that um, what Yoda is able to do by stopping that shit from landing on them in the moment in the heat of battle like that is far more impressive than very slowly lifting the X-Wing out of there. Like, incredibly more so. I think the the X-Wing's heavier than the rocks that he stops on himself, and then the thing that's falling, it's falling slowly, so he's able to make you... And we have no idea how heavy it is. It's falling slowly. It's falling at whatever the the fucking... fucking scene, Ryan. It's falling slowly because he starts to arrest it. It's falling at its normal... Whatever, like, 9.8 meters per second. Whatever fucking gravity accelerates on Geonosis. I don't fucking know if the... Dooku crushes it, and it starts to rip off and fall. That's how it works. So he's got got time, and you have no idea how much it weighs. He doesn't have that much time. We know how much fucking rocks weigh. You know how much an X-Wing's gonna weigh. You don't know what the fucking tower was made of, how much it weighs. I think that tower probably weighs a pro- probably a little bit less than an x-wing but like approximately then. close and that's like in a moment he fucking arrests that and stops it from fucking going in the fucking heat of battle no, he, he as opposed to, to sitting there and like thinking and about it, it for a while and what does that even mean and make a fucking really no, slow no, 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 cinematic no. fucking start remember, you have to, so when i was a kid from the swamp yeah. which is even heavier than an x-wing I, I when so when i was a kid i was like oh it made perfect sense because look all dooku does is he just collapses the the base of it so it falls over yoda is not only freaking just lifting the thing up as if it's stationary he is now lifting it up as it's falling so it's like fucking probably like 10 20 times the amount of weight because of the gravity so he's just like he full-on just drops his shit and just goes and then moves it over a bit and then relaxes it, that to me was more impressive than the x-wing move period well yeah Way but more remember impressive. what i said was add 50%, 50% on yeah, yeah. And that's, that would account for that i think just fine also, his powers were, we could say his powers were draining because he was totally focused on combat. Dooku could fucking throw his lightsaber at Yoda in that moment, and he had to keep, like, his force shield up, or he had to keep his, like, senses up, or his speed up, or whatever, and he was drained from the fight when he was fighting Dooku, where he was just flipping around like a freaking frog. And as we talked about before, <laughs> he is, like, if you want to imagine that Yoda basically ages at, like, point one times the amount of time a normal person does his 900 years basically fucking divide that by 10 basically would be 90 years old in normal human human years he's fucking 88 years old then even when the fight with dooku all right he's an old man yeah sure i don't disagree with that but besides i don't buy into this like the older you are the less you're able to use your force powers anyway no but your body i, I do deteriorate 
your body starts to deteriorate and your cells start to deteriorate. And that's, again, fucking metachlorians are based on the amount of metachlorians you have in your fucking body. Depends on the health of your cells. It's like an old battery. I mean, I don't want to get into metachlorians with you guys, okay? I'm going to allow you guys to have that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, one of the, I'm one of those yeah. OG fads, okay, Fucking... that finds that shit cringe, but that's okay. <laughs> don't leave me hanging, Ryan. Oh, sorry. There you go. All right. Boom. All right, boom. All right. We'll see you guys later. We love you. Hope I, you have a great night. Do you think it's a good question, though? And I understand where Mahler's coming from. How do you embrace nerd culture so well? I struggle sometimes and hinder my small passions from flourishing. What do you mean, so well? What does that mean? We just do our thing. Uh, embrace he's, nerd culture. He's British. Answer his question, Mahler. Yeah, you'll well, we, we, yeah, um, you, you just, it's just talking with friends about stuff you love. I don't know how to explain embracing like maybe nerd like culture. Because people outside don't like it, or um, I just don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, find people who, uh, who are as interested in it as you are, I suppose. Or at least somewhat. Because uh, they said, uh, struggle sometimes and hinder my small passions from flush flourishing. Is that because of other people or, or just that you... Hmm. I guess I'd need more specifics to give any kind of advice, you know? Yeah, yeah I guess, like, what are your passions? Like, do you get so wrapped up in Star Wars that you don't do anything else in your life? I guess that's how I kind of read that. I don't know. I would say it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Just enjoy what you like, talk about what you like, and you'll garner a uh, a group of like-minded individuals from that because they'll they'll find you. Megadeth Ormond. Oh, fuck you. Uh, I like Dave Mustaine, dude. I'm I'm I know even though he did all the stuff for Metallica, I'm probably gonna go Megadeth. I would probably go Metallica, but I love them both. Yeah, I mean. You can't have either of them without Dave Mustaine. Excited for Bad Batch Season 3. Also, Mauler's a baller. In theory, if you could kill one Bad Batch character off, who would it be? Mm -hmm. Probably. What a great question. Fuck, I don't know. Probably. If you could uh... kill one of these team members, who would it be? <laughs> I would kill Omega. Yeah, I'd kill Omega. <laughs> we were like a split second from adding the stream. <laughs> I know. Fuck, meters yeah, meters second. for second squared. I'm sorry. I got I am. How do you embrace? Oh, send it twice. God bless y'all for the grifting. I'm about an hour into the show and loving it. The disagreements and full conversations are. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't Yoda just push Obi Wan and Annie away from the pillar? <laughs> because he's fucking 88 years old. All right, he's 800 okay, years old. So he, you he, guys like, like so maybe sometimes we'll have... his brain doesn't work as quickly. Maybe we'll have that conversation one day, but like, yeah, for the record, I, the prequels are full of these problems. Well, uh, for the record, it's because he didn't think about it. He didn't he think about that split cool. second, bro. He was just like, ah, fuck, I gotta, I gotta stop this whole thing. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll just use that excuse for every dumb shit thing that happens in the sequels. <laughs> that will work out. He didn't, didn't want to risk them it. getting squished, so he just is like, you know what, I'll take it from here. Yeah, because you know why? Because if he'd have pushed him out of the way, that thing would have fucking hit the ground and then rolled onto him. That's why. Could have. Or Dooku could have done something else. Then pull him directly to him. He's in the danger zone. Why don't oh, you go like coping? Come on. <laughs> no, because Dooku could have just done something to like throw. He was Dooku could have done anything like, no matter what. He could have done something the whole time. No. Yes. That's why he was dividing his force power so that he would protect himself as well. Uh huh. Cheers Theory was great to finally meet you in Orlando. Glad you brought on Mahler and Ryan to add some gravitas to the show. Thanks for inspiring so many to get into the YouTube game. Shopping new, a new saber. PSJ will complain about this super chat too. Jay always Jay complains about it. You should have heard what he was saying last night in the car with me and Gina, man. He's, we were both laughing at him. Nice. <laughs> <It's not valiant. laughs> yeah. Uh anyways. Hey, thanks, man. I hope you choose a saber. The full site will be ready in a few weeks, probably like three. And, um, oh my god. If you get rid of one thing, what would you get rid of from Ganon? Reva stabbing. I, I get rid of fucking all of it. Reva get rid of all of it. <laughs> What's Vader's Megadeth song? I, I don't know. You fucking figure it out. All right. We love you guys. <laughs> we'll see you later. Have a good night. See Bye. you, folks.